Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto teamed up with Sertor, and attacked Vanguard? Movie. The Nexus room was silent. The singular being present, known only as the host did not even make the sound usually associated with movement or breathing, simply sitting perfectly still and silent as it stared out over the empty room. The room itself was a blank beige walled space with a handful of simple but comfortable seats. Similarly the host was a pale gray humanoid figure in a drab jumpsuit appearing like an animated puppet almost if not for its deep dark soulless eyes. Slowly the host rose up its right hand above its head, the faint ruffling of fabric being the only sound in the room followed by a snap of its fingers in a deafening crack. With the snap a collection of figures burst into existence out of a single flash of light. They were a diverse group, ten in total if excluding the host. They were also a very displeased group of individuals, bouncing immediately to their feet in outrage and shock at their sudden teleportation to a strange place. Where are we? One of their number, a young woman with pink hair asked. I don't know, but I doubt it's anywhere good, an older silver-haired man replied. Kakashi. A blonde man asked in shock. Hila. Another man said with a conflicted scowl as he looked over at a woman with a headdress. Oh, hello there father. What an interesting place for a reunion. The now named Hila said with an acidic smile. The loud crack of a snap drew the group's attention to the host who briefly gazed over them before snapping again and summoning an ancient looking book. Greetings. Forgive my sudden intrusion into your lives but allow me to explain the situation that is occurring now and introduce each of you. The host flatly said. Its eerie voice would normally put most of the guests on edge but an odd sense of calm filtered over them. You have been brought to the Nexus Room a space between the multitude of realities across all of time and space. Here your powers and abilities are limited to that of an average human as you are simply temporary guests in this place at the behest of powers beyond even your comprehension. Beyond, perhaps, even my comprehension. That all having been said you are in no danger and instead have the opportunity to enjoy a fresh start at life together alongside another whom all of you either have known or do know, the host explained. Minato slowly lowered back into his seat, this is a lot to take in. I understand but I assure you all that this is in your benefit. You are not your original selves, a copy of your original incarnation and little more. Your tasks here are simple and rewarding. As you are only copies, your existence is meaningless, except to entertain those that create all of this. As I said though you will be rewarded. Should you complete your task you shall be granted a new opportunity in life. The host explained. The guests stared blankly before the red-headed woman among them finally asked. Who are you? You may simply refer to my person as the host. Now your compliance is mandatory. You will read and react to events that constitute your original future. Primarily focused onto the individual that ties each of you together but is not present, the host said. The group looked around. Several of them failed to recognize the others before eyes widened. Where is Naruto at? Hila asked with narrowed eyes. He will be joining shortly, but not until after you have begun to read. With a snap the host planted the book into Hela's hands. One final thing will be introductions. Then Hela will begin to read, the host announced. Well, as our, host said, I am Hela Odin's daughter rightful heir to Asgard. The tall darkly dressed woman said as she swept her hands across her head to remove the headdress. What is your connection to Naruto? The redhead demanded. Her toes as well as the Asgardians will be revealed in time. Continue with introductions. The host commanded. Hum. Very well I am Odin Borson, king of Asgard. Odin said as he continued to eye his daughter. Frigga, queen of Asgard. Similarly to Odin, Frigga looked conflicted at the sight of her stepdaughter. She had never been close, but neither had been antagonistic either. I am Thor the god of thunder, and rightful heir to Asgard. Thor declared while glaring at Hela. God? One of the shinobi asked. Just let it go, Sasuke. It's not like that is the weirdest thing today, his sensei said. Please finish your introductions, then we will get started with the reading. The host brought the guests back on task. Very well, my name is Loki, Prince of Asgard and rightful heir. Loki smoothly said while glancing over at his adoptive siblings getting a flat glare from Hela and exasperated frown from Thor. The shinobi present glanced at one another mentally communicating their opinions about the odd family dynamic the Asgardians had in place. Right, I am Minato and this is Kashina, Naruto is our son. 
Minato commented on getting surprised looks from the Asgardians though they refrained from saying anything. I'll just round this out. I'm Kakashi his teacher and these two were Sasuke and Sakura. The masked man introduced his team. Now you may begin the reading. Many of the questions you may have will likely be answered. Proceed Hila Odin's daughter, the host said. Hila slowly nodded. She felt more, complacent than was natural but she would play along for now. If what the bland being said was true, in a short time she would be once more reunited with her love and they could decide a course of action after that. Asgard. The home to many, most notably Thor, Odin, and at one point in time Loki. It was a beautiful land made of giant gold buildings and breathtaking landscapes. Now however it looks a lot different. What was once a beautiful sight was now dull and looking worn down. If one were to look down into the actual city they would see hundreds of Asgardian soldiers laying dead on the ground. Blades embedded into different parts of their bodies. All but one soldier was dead. Gila. Odin hissed in fury. Rebellion ends in death, theirs are mine and they were so much weaker, Gila said simply. The shinobi eyed the woman with a new sense of danger as they realized she might just be a problem. A big problem if they were understanding the situation that was unfolding in the lands of Asgard in their story now. The warriors met their end by the same person. The person responsible for the massacre was a woman who looked no older than 25. She wore a form-fitting black and dark green bodysuit with a portion of the shoulders missing. She has long flowing black hair as well as dark shadows around her eyes. Her name is Gila Odin's daughter the firstborn child of the former king of Asgard. Former king. Several of the guests muttered. Well it seems an opportunity has presented itself. Gila and Loki both said at the same time. How is it they aren't biologically related in any way but they are more similar than I am with either of them? Thor pouted faintly. Go back to whatever cave you crept out from. Yelled the final Asgardian warrior you evil demoness. He added before charging. Unfortunately for him he didn't get very far as Gila wound her arm back and created a blade that pierced the mons body. He was left suspended on the blade, his feet not touching the ground. So rude, Asgard is my home after all. I can't believe you would have subordinates so willing to insult their own home like that father. Gila joked, causing Odin to roll his eyes. Taking a look around to make sure no one is standing she turns around to her companion. He's a bald-headed man with two tattoos on his head and armor. This is Scourge the man she ended up giving a job to. He didn't exactly accept more like not answer and didn't get killed for it. A traitor. Odin frowned. A hypocrite. Loki scoffed, getting a betrayed look from his father. They are so dysfunctional. Sakura whispered to Sasuke. The dark-haired boy was self-aware enough to simply give her a look before slowly pointing between himself, her, and Kakashi. Come now. We have things to do. She says as she walks past him. Scourge takes one look around before following suit. The two made their way through Asgard in direction of the Bifrost. To both of their surprise, Hofun, the sword that activates the Bifrost was missing. Impossible. Scourge says while running up the steps, it was just here, he added before turning to look at Gila. The goddess narrowed her eyes in anger before turning around and walking away. Scourge caught up to her and spoke we'll find the sword. Whoever took it can't be too far away. He's a bit of a coward, Kashina commented sourly. Cowards can be useful, Minato and Gila said simultaneously, blinking in surprise as they glanced at one another. See to it that you do. But never mind that now. There's something much more important we must do. Hurry along now, Gila told him. Seeing that she wasn't in the best of moods he didn't speak and simply walked faster to keep pace. He wondered where they were going. To his confusion she took them to Odin's throne room. Having not been in there that many times he looked around taking in the sights. He stopped when he noticed Gila stopped walking and was looking up at the mural on the ceiling. The goddess of death felt a deep anger flow through her as she looked at the images. Goddess of death, Minato mumbled. A mental image of the phantom like Shinigami hovered over Hela's shoulder. That's only extremely ominous, Kashina mumbled. This is what Odin replaced the truth with. She hissed out as she took in the pictures of Thor and Loki. Look at these lies. Goblets and garden parties. She hissed. She looked at the next images. Peace treaties? She said no more, instead opting to create multiple blades and strike the ceiling at different points. Lies? Thor asked. Odin said nothing while Hela sent her father a look. Frigga looked guilty as well. 
Yes Odin believed it was the best way to achieve a brighter peaceful future, Frigga admitted. Lies don't form a good base to build from, Kakashi said. Sasuke and Sakura nodded along, they knew now about the lies surrounding Naruto and Sasuke's childhoods that only made things worse as time went on. Scourge watched as the ceiling began breaking before completely falling down. He moved out of the way as to not get hit by debris while Hila stayed put. When the slight smoke cleared he noticed a different mural. Scourge frowned in confusion as he stared at the new images. Odin in the center, around him images of battles portraying Hila and himself as well as one other notable person. Hila began explaining to him the story of how Asgard was a force to be reckoned with before Odin seemingly had a change of heart. He tuned part of her out as his attention was focused on one image in particular. Odin and Hela side by side. Odin holding up his golden staff and Hela holding up a hammer that looked like the one Thor used. What really caught his attention was the other man. In that same image there was a blonde man standing behind Hela. The shocking part was that his arm was holding her around the waist pulling her towards him. He too had a staff being held up into the air. It was nothing fancy, a simply thin black staff with a C shape at the end of it. Naruto. Several people in the room excluding only the host, Thor, and Loki said quietly. And as our ambition grew greater than his, the old man decided to seal us away until the end of time. She finished. Whether she knew that Scourge wasn't listening he didn't know but he was thankful she didn't call him out on it. He was tempted to ask her who the guy was in the picture but didn't get the chance as she continued on forwards. You sealed our son away? Kashina shouted toward the old man. He was a threat. Odin snarled back. Naruto is a hero. Sakura joined in. The shinobi were immediately on their missing member's side of things. He had powered through every obstacle and won not only their respect but also peace for their people. He was a weapon. Odin said grimly, causing rage to spark in the eyes of Hela and the shinobi. Before it could continue the host intervened forcing the group back on track. Let's go. She told him. The two walked down a few sets of stairs before Scourge realized where they were. Odin's vault he whispered to himself. He had only ever heard of this place. It was said to contain only the most powerful artifacts. They walked down the path, lined on both sides with relics. Hela stopped at a golden gauntlet. It's impressive. Not that I know what any of that is, Kakashi commented. Less impressive than you think, both Hela and Loki said. Thor pouted as he knew what was coming. Though not as badly as Odin, even though only Frigga could tell with him. Fake. She said as she knocked it over. Most of this stuff is fake anyways. Weak she commented as she looked at the casket of ancient winters. Some of the Asgardians shot Hela a hurt look causing the woman to roll her eyes. The shinobi remained largely lost though. The crown of Sertor she noted was smaller than she expected. The tesseract was in her opinion, not bad, finally she came across the item she was looking for. Not bad. Loki asked slowly. Just watch big sister. You'll catch on to real power soon enough. Hela smiled arrogantly. Now this is truly special. The eternal flame, she said as she dipped her hand in it. She pulled it out and Scourge watched as the flames danced in the palm of her hand. Hela produced a weapon out of her sleeve and proceeded to smash the ground until a portion caved in. Looking down, all that could be seen was darkness. The goddess turned around. Odin tensed. His daughter was rebuilding her forces, which meant after them would be him. Want to see what real power looks like? She asked before letting herself fall backwards into the pit. She flipped right side up on the way down and landed gracefully. She looked at the bodies of all her warriors and her trusted dog in sadness. With the eternal flame you are reborn. She exclaimed before slamming her hand on the ground. The flames turned green and began consuming everything around her inside the room. The skeletons of the long dead warriors lit up in green flames before giving them life. Fenris' eyes glowed before it too began standing on all fours. Soon her former comrades were all awake and began walking towards her before kneeling. Minato frowned at that. Having been a victim of the Edo Tensai he recalled how wrong it felt. However this seemed drastically different and he wasn't sure what those warriors could feel at all. I've missed you. She said looking at Fenris. I've missed you all. She repeated to everyone else. She waved her hand and all the undead warriors began jumping out of the hole. Minato hummed at that. Despite her coming across as a power-hungry tyrant almost he could also tell that perhaps there was more to this Gila. 
he himself had been regarded as a butcher and monster by some so was the concept of a warrior queen like her being so brutal to her enemies really so bad. Kashina simply looked displeased. She was already guessing at the connection of her son with Hela thanks to the mural. It didn't necessarily fill her with optimism for what they would be reading more about. The feeling only worsened as she realized that this was her son's future they were reading. We're still missing one. She said quietly to herself as she walked deeper into the room. She walked for a good five minutes down a set of stairs until she found what she was looking for. It was a pitch black room. The only light visible was a small fire in the corner of the room that didn't seem to give off much light. In the center was what looked like a large boulder. You really sealed him away, like a biju or like, Sakura said horrified for her friend. Kaguya. Sasuke frowned. He and Naruto had plenty of issues in the past but Naruto was the one person he truly respected and called brother. He could only imagine how long the blonde had been sealed away. Already he was on the same side as this Gila woman. His loyalty was to his friend. The man that had pulled him back from becoming a monster himself. Etched into the stone were hundreds upon hundreds of Asgardian runes. The old fool really outdid himself with this. She said as she ran her hand along the stone. Her prison weakened with his death but not his. It made sense to her though, of the two he was the stronger one. Not that she'd ever admit it to him, she didn't want him to get a big head. Thor and Loki exchanged a look. They couldn't help but wonder just what this Naruto was like. What kind of horror was about to be unleashed. Kashina eyed the woman once more as her thoughts on her and her son ran through her mind. Kashina had never really gotten much of a chance to be a mother, but still she felt protective of her son even after all the power he had gained that her husband had told her of. It was natural. She placed both of her hands on it before pushing her power into it. The runes glowed a bright green before cracks began appearing on its surface. Soon it was done, the boulder exploded. And so he is freed. Odin sighed, he sounded largely defeated. Blackness was all he knew. He didn't feel anything around him, see anything, or hear anything. It wasn't that he was deaf, no. There just wasn't anything around to make any noise except for his own breathing. All he had were his thoughts. He didn't know how long it had been since he'd been trapped here, he'd long since lost track. It felt like forever though. Most of the time he spent going over just how he had ended up here. A torture in its own form. Sasuke grumbled unhappily. The host watched the group closely. It could sense the displeasure among many of the readers. The tension growing over them. It had been so sudden. His life was great, he and Sasuke had defeated Kaguya with a bit of help from the sage. The two worked out their issues and Sasuke had finally seen the error of his ways as Itachi had wished. Everything was good, but over time he noticed something strange. As he grew, so too did his power. It seemed that Hagoromo had given him more than just a small power boost. Eventually his power became so great he had no equal on his planet. When his time finally came, and he died of old age he found himself in a similar room as the one where he had met his mom. So this is how then, or at least part of how, it was the sage's fault, Kakashi commented. Who is Kaguya? Thor asked. Imagine an all-powerful goddess able to create and destroy on a whim and travel between dimensions as easily as opening a door, Sasuke said. The Asgardians grimaced, Hela smirked. Kaguya sounded impressive indeed. Only this time he wasn't with his mom. The only other person in that place was a whitish yellow figure with no distinguishable features. When he asked who he was the figure referred to itself as, the one above all, he explained how his power had reached heights that should have been unattainable to mere humans. As such he would not be going to the heaven that his world leads to. Instead he would awaken and reside in a place called Asgard. That's not fair though. Sakura stated. That's right, it's not. That old sage bastard went even after sitting around the mortal world for centuries after he died, but Naruto can't? Kashina was outraged. I'm glad. Had he gone to your heaven he wouldn't have had a second lifetime. A happier lifetime even though it had trials and battles of its own, Hila said simply. Before the blonde had a chance to protest he was ejected from the space and awoke in a completely different place. Not only that but he looked the way he did when he was 24 and had his old power intact. After a few years in his new home he joined their army and quickly rose through the ranks. Eventually his power was known throughout the lands and he found himself as Odin's right-hand man. His word was only less impactful than Odin's himself and his daughter Hela. He's very different from the Naruto we know, Kakashi said. 
he's had another lifetime of experiences. Just like people change over a lifetime he would change more from a second one. Loki said, getting a surprised look that annoyed him from Thor. Though the small smile from Frigga caused the god of mischief to bite his tongue, for now. Hela and himself were Odin's main weapons in their conquests. The two of them would lead the charges against enemies, both invading and defending, and together took many lands. The nine realms were won basically because of them too. Their chemistry was good, so well that they were almost inseparable. It came as no surprise to anyone when word got out that the two were together. Over time they grew even closer and eventually with Odin's blessing they wed they were powerful, they were feared and respected, everything was good. I really do not like Naruto being referred to as a weapon, Minato said. Funny, considering. Sasuke said with a look causing the blonde to narrow his eyes at him. Oh yes, father and father-in-law, so similar at their base level, Hila said, causing Minato to frown once more in agitation while Odin refused to take his daughter's bait. That was until Odin feared that Hela's ambition for power and dominance was growing out of hand. Odin had a difficult choice to make. He loved his daughter and son-in-law but feared for the future. He knew that wherever Hela went her husband would follow. His fear drove him to seal them away for all of eternity. The room remained silent but a series of glares and thoughtful looks filled the room. A few guilt-ridden ones as well. All of them wondered how they would handle the situation and each of them hoped that they would have made a better solution than Odin. Sadly they would never know. The blonde never saw it coming as one moment he and Hela had just finished a hard battle and were exhausted. As they were preparing to depart Odin had ambushed them, a beam of light from Odin's staff was the last thing he saw before the familiar blackness took over. Father, Thor mumbled in shock at what he had just learned. Hum, I have to say an excellent double cross. Maybe I am your son after all. Loki said watching the pained frown deepen on Odin's face in sadistic joy. The shinobi, had they not been won over in support of their friend and son from the beginning, were now committed to him and his apparent lover even more. They also had a strong distaste for this king of Asgard, he clearly wasn't one to trust. His musings were interrupted as a green light appeared in front of him. His eyes grew wide as he realized what was happening. Suddenly for the first time in years he hears her voice. Welcome back darling. He hears. He couldn't see her as the bright green light from the fire as well as not seeing light in years had left him sensitive for the moment. It would take hours or days for a normal person to recuperate from this, for him however, it only took a few minutes. When his eyesight was back he finally saw her face. Hela was as beautiful as he remembered. He walked forward and wrapped her in a hug. She sighed but returned the embrace nonetheless. Emotions and such were never really her thing but she'd make an exception. Sakura and Kashina awed at the sight. As guarded as they felt toward the woman wrapped in darkness, they could see both Naruto and Hela cared for one another deeply. Frigga also smiled faintly at the sight. He lets her go and takes a look around at the now broken rock he was in. So what have I missed? Where's that old man? He asked referring to Odin. The old man is dead. She said happily before taking a look at his tattered clothing. Before anything else though, she trailed off. She snapped her fingers in his direction and on him a new set of clothing appeared. He now had on a pair of black pants along with a form-fitting black and green shirt. Over the shirt was a piece of black armor covering the chest and shoulders but leaving the sides open. He had matching arm guards on both arms. Oh, that looks good. Sakura said. She was so used to the variations of orange, seeing her friend in something else made it much easier to see how handsome he was. For her brother figure she could only approve and oddly enough it got points for Hela in her mind. Matching colors huh? He grinned at her. She snorted quickly in amusement before walking off. Kashina hummed and Minato chuckled at her actions. He knew she was trying not to gush about her baby interacting with his wife but it wasn't really in her to be able to restrain herself all that well. Come now I'll fill you in on what's going on. She told him. He followed suit and left the room and jumped out of the hole they were in. Scourge noticed him and realized it was the same guy he'd seen in the mural. He looked innocent enough unlike Hela but he felt something was off about the man. Odin's gotten some new ones since the last time I was here. Naruto commented as he walked alongside Hela. Yes. Too bad most of the things in here are either fake or weak. She says before turning to Scourge to tell him something. The two noticed that their blonde companion was no longer walking alongside them. Turing around they found him looking at a glowing blue cube. The Asgardians grimaced in various amounts of distaste as they knew what caught Naruto's eye. 
Hila simply smirked. That's the only decent thing in this place, she commented to him. He didn't answer, instead his gaze was kept on the cube. He was looking at with concentration she hadn't seen from him before. What is it darling? She asked. Again he didn't reply, instead he picked the cube up and began to close his hand around it then began adding pressure. In a matter of seconds the cube let off a small pulse of power before it was crushed. I think he has already gained enormous power, but whatever that is must be incredibly strong on its own, Kakashi commented. Smart of him to use it, he has changed a lot, Sasuke said. Minato and Kashina both glanced toward Team 7 causing Kakashi to stiffen while the younger pair failed to notice. It seemed not all was forgotten and forgiven when it came to certain treatment of a certain blonde in his first life. No matter how things had turned out in the end. When he opened his hand again they noticed a small blue stone inside the small pile of glass that was the cube. Naruto dropped the glass leaving only the stone in his hand. So this is an infinity stone. The blonde said to himself. That sounds pretty interesting. Kashina said. Interesting, is a very grave understatement. Thor said. Only calling it a grave understatement is itself a grave understatement. Loki added on. You two really have no idea about some of the more insanely powerful things out there do you? Odin failed to prepare you for the real powers out there. Hela said with a scoff before she continued to read. Odin told me about these stones once. There's six of them, each giving the user great power depending on what stone he or she has in their possession. This will be useful. He commented. He took off his arm guard and pulled his sleeve back. On his forearm was a simple storage seal from when he was alive. He placed the stone close to it and the others watched as the stone disappeared. The seal glowed briefly before it died down. Well now that that's done. Naruto began as he went and wrapped an arm around his wife. Lead the way. He finished. She shook her head in amusement but continued nonetheless. Scourge meanwhile watched in confusion the whole time. He was about to speak when his new queen turned her attention to him. Find the sword. I don't care if you need to turn Asgard upside down. I want it found. Understood? She asked. Scourge gulped but nodded. I guess cowards really do have their uses, Kashina said. Good. We'll be back in a few hours. Now go. The man left the vault on a mission, for he knew if he failed he was as good as dead. So where are we going? Naruto asked. He let a smirk grace her face. To our chambers of course. It's been over 1500 years you know. I'm getting impatient let's go. She told him. Naruto's eyes widened in excitement as he knew he was in for a good time and hurried after her. Kakashi and Minato smiled while a few others grimaced. Kashina did not want to picture her baby in that sort of situation at all while Sakura blushed lightly despite having recently married Sasuke herself. After a few hours of fun and a brief explanation later the two now refreshed entities were standing before the inhabitants of Asgard. Hila looks out at the people before speaking up. Refreshed. Loki rolled his eyes. Oh please, like you can even imagine, Hila replied. What are you implying? Loki growled, he wasn't one to be humiliated. That even if you were to have censored with someone, it wouldn't compare in the slightest to he and I making love to one another. We just do everything a bit, Hila trailed off. Better. Thor asked sarcastically. Well yes, but I was going to say more honestly. We are married, you know. Have either of you ever felt true love? She asked with a raised eyebrow causing both younger Asgardians to stare back at her awkwardly. She was far different than what they were expecting. Actually sitting and talking with her was making a different image of the goddess of death in their mind. Everyone here has decided against our rule. She says referring to herself and Naruto. One of you knows who stole the sword to activate the Bifrost, or one of you yourselves has stolen it. So we're going to give you a little incentive to hand it over. You there. She points at a woman in the crowd. Bring her forth. On command her warriors retrieved the woman. She was crying, pleading to be let go but her pleas fell on deaf ears. Hum. A public execution. Haven't seen one of those in a long time. Naruto commented as he watched Hila present Scourge with an axe. Hold on, Naruto wouldn't be okay with that, Sakura said in shock. Oh. You know him so well after what? Twenty years maybe. I've known him for centuries. Fought alongside him for just as long on battlefields that would ensure you never slept again. You know a child. That is a man. Hila said, causing Sakura to click her mouth closed. They are establishing control anyway. 
Sakura. Naruto served as Hokage before he died. Do you honestly believe he never ordered the execution of someone, or never had to kill someone? He was a soldier for Kami's sake. Kashina reprimanded. He worked for peace though, not oppression. Sasuke argued. You are a child. Hila said as she returned to reading. Just as the man was about to bring the axe down, a man in the crowd admitted that he knew where the sword was. Take us, she ordered. They were taken to a mountainside where two giant doors were closed. The goddess began creating blades but a hand on her shoulder stopped her. Please allow me. I haven't been able to really stretch my legs since I've been free, he told her. Many of the guests leaned forward at the notion of some of Naruto's powers being showcased. She took a step back and gave him some space. Very well. Smiling at her he raised his hand in direction of the door and used his magnet release to forcefully pull the door off the mountain. It remained floating in mid-air until he dropped it down using it as a bridge for them to get across. After you my queen. He told her as he extended his hand. With that being said the army headed in. She walked in with her army following suit only to find out that the chamber was now empty. The undead warriors began storming the room looking for any hidden citizens only to come up with nothing. The situation is weird but I like the interaction. You can tell you two care for one another. Kashina said, finally having decided she could accept her daughter-in-law. Hila chuckled as she smirked at the redhead. Hila narrowed her eyes in anger and was about to speak before she was cut off by a banging sound. Then another. That's coming from the throne room Naruto commented as he looked in that direction. Thor is here. I'll be sure to kill him this time, Hila said. Who's Thor? Naruto asked. My brother. That god of thunder, she told him using air quotes when saying his title. This will be kinda weird. Meeting the in-laws is always a pain, Kakashi joked. The others turned to stare at him. Kakashi slowly sank deeper into his seat as the others gave him blank stares. He turned as he felt someone patting his shoulder. You've come a long way trying to be humorous from the little kid I had on my team. Just maybe read the room better. Minato said pleasantly, causing his student to sink back into his seat even further. Your brother. Hum. Perhaps I should meet him. He said rubbing his chin. But before that, do you mind making me another staff? I could make one myself but it won't work for what I have in mind. He asked her. Hila brought her arm up in his direction. On command a pole began extending out of her sleeve until finally the whole thing was revealed. Scourge noticed it was the exact same one he had in the picture on the mural. The blonde held it up for a second making sure everything was right before nodding in satisfaction. He rolled up his sleeve and smacked his forearm allowing a poof of smoke to appear. Once cleared it was revealed to be the space stone he had taken from the cube. Holding it in his right hand he slammed it into his staff just under where the C shape at the top began. The stone let off a pulse of power as it sat in the staff before calming down. Now let's see if this works. He said as he applied a little chakra to the staff. It worked as the stone began to glow and a dark blue portal appeared in front of him. He is going to outpower the sage soon at this rate, Sasuke said. If he doesn't already. Minato agreed though he also carried a great deal of pride for his son. All right now we can go. He said as he held his hand out to his wife. She takes his hand and walks forward but not before stopping to speak to her executioner. Deal with the people, she ordered as they left through the portal. The two deities reappeared in front of a shocked Thor who wasn't expecting this at all. Before the god of thunder could speak Naruto stepped forward. You must be Thor, nice to meet you, he said calmly. Thor frowned, not understanding who this strange man was. Who the hell are you? He questioned. He'd never seen this man before. How rude, little brother. Didn't daddy dearest teach you any manners? Hila asked. She has a point. Kashina agreed. Oh I'm going to like having you as a mother-in-law I believe, Hila said. We'll see. Kakashi mumbled under his breath getting a suspicious eye from Kashina. Oh right, my bad I haven't introduced myself yet. Naruto Uzumaki I'm your brother-in-law. Thor was baffled. If the situation wasn't so dire he'd believe this to be one of Loki's tricks brother-in-law. He repeated to make sure he hadn't misheard. A nod was his answer. Ahem. I married your sister a long time ago. Isn't she the greatest? He asked turning his head to glance at her. Now Thor knew something was very wrong. His sister, the greatest. Most definitely not. Oh you're going to hurt my feelings. Hela pouted jokingly. 
The demigod turned to his sister, he's joking right? She let out a chuckle no he's not joking. I actually did marry this simpleton a long time ago. She replied while running a finger under the blonde's chin. But let's not discuss that now. You're in my seat. She said as she ran her hands through her hair, allowing her antler-like headpiece to appear. Even in that you two managed to be cute together. Kashina gushed slightly. Minato smiled, he was happy to see her pleased with their daughter-in-law. Believe me I'd love for someone to rule Asgard but it can't be you because, you're the worst Thor replied. Needs work. Sasuke groused. Yes, you really should try practicing your lines before you make another attempt at a joke. Loki jumped in to pick at his brother. Ah, so you rehearse your jokes then Loki? Hela asked causing. Hela turned to the blonde. Don't interfere. Was all she said before the two siblings began their duel. The blonde frowned but complied nonetheless. As the two were duking it out he could sense multiple battles happening near the Bifrost. I'm going to go enjoy myself, he said to his wife before he used the stone to teleport himself out of the room. Those opposing Hela didn't know it yet, but they were in for a bad time. You may take a break if you desire. Kashina will be reading next, the host said. If you are all fine with it I would actually like to continue on, Kashina said as she quickly flipped to the correct page. I wouldn't mind we have only been here a moment anyway, Hila said flippantly. Kashina cleared her throat and began reading straight away. The group was too into the story to take a break and instead dove right back in. Naruto appeared in the center of the bridge leading to the Bifrost where the undead army plus Scourge were fighting. All participants briefly stopped what they were doing as he arrived but soon went back to their business. All but one that is. A man dressed in an elegant green and gold outfit under Asgardian armor along with a golden headpiece with two long curved horns stepped forth. This man is Loki, the god of mischief. Ah, I would normally be happy about appearing in a story. I can't help but worry slightly, especially if you were my sister's consort, Loki said thoughtfully. I'm sure the two of you will get along swimmingly, Hela smirked. I'm sorry but who might you be? Loki asked. Naruto looked him over briefly before answering. Well if you want an official title then it would be Hela's vanguard. That or her husband. Both of those would work really, he answered calmly. Loki shook his head with a slight smile. I'm sorry I thought I heard you say you were my sister's husband, but I'm sure I must have misheard. Oh no, younger me, you heard, Loki said with a sigh. Naruto smiled at the man no you got it right. And you called her sister, so I guess you're my brother-in-law too. So you're Asgardian. Loki concluded. Somewhat. The blonde replied I wasn't born here but due to circumstances here I am. He added before using his staff to smack a warrior off the bridge into the sea below without taking his eyes off him. That is actually something we might have in common. Loki said in surprise as he realized they were both born as others and became essentially Asgardian. Well. Loki began as he kicked an undead knight away from him. I love chaos and destruction as much as the next god but you, he said pointing at Naruto don't strike me as the type. So what's your game? He asked. That's what I'm wondering. Naruto is the closest thing to a pacifist that Konoha has produced. Ever. Sakura commented. That's funny to me. Hila commented, getting glances from the shinobi. What do you mean? Kakashi asked. My husband may not be big on destruction or even war really but he most definitely is a being of chaos. Wild and untamed. Hila answered with a smirk. Why did that sound so uncomfortable? It was like she was talking about Thor began to question out loud. Thor, son, stop talking. Frigga ordered, not really wanting to discuss relations between Naruto and Hila. My game. Originally it was to kill Odin for what he did to us, but he's dead now. There was once a time where I'd be against all of this. But after Odin betrayed us and Asgard went ahead and swept us under the rug like we never existed I couldn't care less about this place. He's so different. Kakashi hummed. A second life and what was it 1500 years sealed away after being betrayed, I think that changes someone. Loki replied sarcastically. Kakashi eyed the green clad man and decided he rather disliked this god. Imagine giving everything you had for Asgard only to end up being stabbed in the back. Everything we did was for the greatness of this place and for what? Odin sealed my wife and I, the people didn't care enough to spread word of our existence. They just let us fade away. Seeing that he had the Mons full attention he continued. But you want to know the worst part of it? 
It was with Odin's blessing that I married Hela and was accepted into the the family. The man used to call me, son, and would constantly tell me that he was glad I was the one his daughter had married. To have one of the people who seemingly cared about you the most turn on not just you but his own blood. To find out they were weary of you. It changes you. He finished. Fair. Sasuke commented. That's putting it mildly. You're lucky old man. We can't do shit here but I would happily kill you. Kashina growled. She would get the chance. Minato said before snapping his fingers. Like a flash. For a moment Loki felt a pang of empathy. For he too felt Odin didn't really love him as he had claimed. So what you're here for revenge on the people then? He was kind of a shit father all around then. Hela laughed. That's not fair. Thor tried to weakly defend him, but with all the reveals honestly it was harder that he thought it would be. No I really don't care about the people anymore. The blonde answered, or Asgard in general for that matter. But Hela wants her rightful place on the throne and I'll help her get it, he added. He really loves you. Even people that had done him wrong in the past he forgave and even typically got along with. He would genocide Asgard for you. Sakura realized in Horo as she turned to the grinning goddess. I know, isn't he romantic? Hela replied simply with a smirk. Loki chuckled slightly. The man still wasn't getting it. Yes yes I get it. You're in love with my sister and will seemingly do anything to see her happy that's fine I get all that. But what's your deal? He asked emphasizing, you're, surely you have aspirations of your own rather than just following her around? He asked. The readers leaned in. This could be interesting. The god needed information. He could feel the strength this man possessed. While he looked innocent enough he stood tall and didn't seem to worry about what was going on around him. The mere fact that he possessed the space stone and had the ability to use it was reason enough to be weary of him. If he could somehow convince this man to join him then perhaps his chances of survival would increase. Good luck with that. All of the shinobi as well as Hela, Odin, and Frigga said. Loki just rolled his eyes. As he finished his train of thought an image of a purple giant with golden armor appeared in his mind. Who was that? Minato asked. It will be revealed in time. The host interrupted any explanation. You're right. I do have aspirations of my own. The blonde finally answered. You see one of the main reasons why wars begin is due to lack of resources. There's too many mouths not enough to go around. When Odin told me about the infinity stones I looked into it anywhere I could. Eventually I found something. Loki and Thor shared very real expressions of dread at Naruto's words. I found that should anyone possess all six stones they will basically become omnipotent. That's when it hit me. With all six stones I could create unlimited resources in the universe. No more hunger, no more poverty, no more destroying planets for resources. Hela will rule Asgard as she should and I bring the universe as close to peace as possible. Of course there will be people who try and cause conflict for other reasons. But with the six stones in my possession, well I think they'd think twice about it don't you think? That was pretty much my plan, Sasuke said with agitation. No, I'm pretty sure your plan was to tell everyone what to do and kill them if they even thought about raising a hand against you, Kakashi replied. That's what he plans, Sasuke argued. Sasuke, the core of his plan is to make enough of everything for everyone in the universe. That is not the same as just killing people because they are starving and angry. It's a better plan than yours cause it's not just oppression. Sakura said, causing the boy to gawk at her arguing against him. She noticed his stare. You are surprised I disagreed with you conquering the world and killing my teacher along with the other cage? The boy snapped his mouth shut and simply huffed waiting for the story to continue. So you want to collect the infinity stones? Loki asked. While he looked calm on the outside, on the inside he was the embodiment of happiness. This was perfect. This might be the perfect person to beat him. Well if that's the case then there is something important you should know. You're not the only one. Now all that was left was to talk the man into joining him and everything would go smoothly. Things were looking up for the god. As Naruto was about to reply a huge lightning bolt struck the palace where Hela and Thor were currently fighting. Naruto looked up and saw the god of thunder coming down in their direction. When he landed he noticed that the man's right eye was black and no longer open. Oh that had to hurt. Hela joked getting a glare from Thor causing her to roll her eyes. It does hurt. Both Kakashi and Sasuke replied with frowns and the memory of fingers digging into their eye sockets running through their minds. Standing besides Loki, 
Thor turned his head towards his brother. Worry not brother. He may be strong but we can take him. He said before he ran forward, lightning charging itself around him. Loki didn't have the time to react as his brother rushed in. Loki stared at Thor who only shrugged his shoulders in response as if to say, What can you do? The god of mischief wisely chose to drop it and motioned Kashina to continue. Wait. Stop you if I had it under control. Loki yelled. Unfortunately for him his brother did not listen and had already begun his assault. Loki watched as the blonde just weaved and dodged every attack Thor threw at him. Thor having realized that close combat wasn't working jumped back and summoned lighting from his hand and directed it at Naruto. Hela seemed to be near laughter as the image of the fight displayed in the center of the room in time with Kashina reading. Minato and Kashina likewise were enjoying the sight of their son at work. Said man brought his staff forward and began to spin it at a ridiculous speed in front of him. The lightning collided with the staff and dispersed soon after. As soon as the attack died down Naruto used the staff to parry a lightning enhanced punch to the right. The moment he parried he swung his staff back around and hit Thor once in the ribs before redirecting the staff to hit the man with the bottom of it under his chin. Both hits were done in rapid succession. Before Thor had a chance to compose himself the blonde then kicked him hard in the chest sending him stumbling back to Loki. The god of mischief watched as his brother was completely outclassed and merely stepped aside letting his brother tumble past him rather than help slow his body down. He noticed Thor getting up again and it didn't take a genius to know he was going to try again. No thoughts of strategy or anything, just smash what's in front of you. Does that actually work for you? Sakura asked only to blush as Kakashi and Sasuke gave her wide-eyed stares of disbelief. You know what never mind, Miss Kashina please keep reading, Sakura mumbled. As Thor moved past him he stopped him with a hand on his shoulder. Why are you stopping me brother? He demanded. As he answered a black and green portal opened up next to the blonde and out of it stepped their sister. Well for one Hela just arrived. And second we were about to come to an arrangement before you arrived. I need you to stand down. Loki told him. Well, perhaps you all can find a way to come to a compromise. For the good of Asgard. Frigga said, only partially caring about Asgard. She truly did care for all four of them, though she was never close to Naruto and Hela. Thor looked over at the two and back to his brother and nodded. He didn't want to back down but decided to put his trust in Loki. However, just in case he had instructed the Valkyrie to get the crown of Sir Tor as he realized exactly what he had to do. If in the next few minutes they couldn't handle things peacefully, well their home would be destroyed. That's awfully petty. You can't be king so you destroy your home to keep her from being queen. That's just. Minato was a bit disgusted, truth be told. Well, don't say it like that. I Thor defended. He stopped when he realized none of the shinobi were really all that interested in being convinced of anything by the man opposed to their friend and loved one and his wife. Now, as I was saying. Loki began. You're not the only one who's looking to collect all six infinity stones. However, unlike you this person isn't looking to use them for reasons as noble as you are. I see and are you planning on telling me who this person is? Naruto asked. Loki grinned I might. Perhaps we can come to an arrangement. Hela sent Loki a very annoyed glance, one mirrored by Kashina and oddly enough Sasuke as well. Snake. Kashina huffed. Reminds me of Orochimaru. Sasuke said with a sick expression. Hela scoffed next to Naruto he really sounds like Odin. Really ticks me off, she commented. Naruto just looked at her amused before turning his attention back to Loki. Take that back. Loki said instantly, it's not that bad. Odin finally joined in with his take. Says you. I think it's a horrible insult, Hela laughed. Okay I'll bite. What kind of arrangement? He asked as he tilted his head to avoid an arrow. We become allies. This man is not one to take lightly. He's powerful, unbelievably so, he responded. You're afraid. Hela said. Whoever this person is must be far stronger than you and you feel the need to seek protection, she added. That's a given. Sasuke said with a scoff. You wouldn't take him lightly either even if you were once Naruto's equal. He is a threat to the universe as a whole, Thor said seriously. Sasuke frowned at being reminded that Naruto had surpassed him. Loki glared at her before willing his anger down. It wouldn't do to get angry at the moment. He could swallow his pride for the time being. You're partially right. He admitted. I do not seek protection but rather allies as he will no doubt come looking for me. 
What do you mean brother? Thor asked seriously. He'd never once heard Loki admit to needing help. This was worrying. Loki was going to answer but was beaten to it by the blonde man. Your brother must have worked for him at some point. He began either you screwed up and he's after you, or you backstabbed him. Either way you're on his shit list. He clarified. As he finished his sentence he noticed that the ship that was being loaded with the Asgardian people was beginning to take off. He closed his eyes and gathered his chakra. Oh. Nail on the head, huh? Kashina giggled at Loki's annoyed expression. Using his magnet release he created the magnetic field around the area and pulled the ship back down, crashing into the bridge they were on. All right so what do you want from this alliance then? He did that frighteningly easily, Frigga commented. Thor was stunned. His brother, the god of mischief and lies was actually solving their issue with arguably the two strongest beings they've seen in a civil manner. He never thought he'd see the day. This is what happens when you don't approach every obstacle like that simple green monster friend of yours. Loki scolded his brother. Thor eyed his brother sourly but said nothing. There was a point to be made there. All I ask is that when that man comes to try and kill me you give me a hand with him. Likewise, he'll be coming after you soon too. After all, you're in possession of an infinity stone so he'll try and take it from you. Loki answered. That and you leave the people of Asgard in peace. Thor butted in, glaring at his brother briefly for not mentioning that bit in his negotiation. You can have all the peace you want around here as long as they kneel before me. Hela answered back. That's all they have to do. I'm the rightful heir to the throne and as such I'm their queen. Once they kneel before me this can all end. Thor and Hela glared at one another while the rest of the readers wanted to see how this would play out. We'll accept this so long as the executions cease. No ruling with an iron fist. This isn't your time anymore. Times have changed. People have changed. Thor said. That is debatable. Hela scoffed. There was little bite in it though. I know you must be angry, but really, to rule people there has to be a people to rule. Minato said getting the woman to roll here eyes in annoyance. You may be my husband's father, but what are you twenty-five? Don't lecture me child. Hela sneered. Hela narrowed her eyes and was about to retort when the ground began shaking. Everyone looked up as a large chunk of the land behind them exploded as a giant monster of earth and fire began rising above Asgard. Oh no Thor whispered. What did you do? Loki asked angrily. I sent the Valkyrie to release Sir Tor as he was cut off by his fellow blonde. Destroying Asgard would drain Hela of her power, he finished. Once again the Thor smash strategy strikes again. Woe that your name didn't start with an A and let me create a fun little acronym. Loki bemoaned. He's saying it would spell ass and that would fit you well, Hela said. Thor mimed a laughing face before turning away from his siblings while Thor groaned. They're like normal siblings but with crazy amounts of power, it's kind of scary, Kashina said. Hopefully Naruto will rein them all in, Minato agreed. Yeah, don't count on that. Kakashi mumbled as he shook his head. Hela was right earlier Naruto was kind of a force foe chaos so he didn't really see the blonde reigning in anything. Tremble before me Asgard! yelled Sir Tor as he raised his sword high in the air. Would have been a brilliant plan had I not been here as well. Naruto commented as he watched Sir Tor wind up his weapon. Naruto stood calmly and materialized a truth seeking orb through his hand and willed it to take the form of a large disc. I'll be back in a second, don't do anything stupid now, he said before a blue and black portal opened behind him and took him in. The room collectively felt a little self conscious about their own abilities at the moment. Barring Hela. She was just enjoying this different point of view of the events honestly. Thor was tempted to attack Hela now that the blonde was gone but decided against it. Everyone watched as Sir Thor swung his giant blade down into the city, destroying a few buildings before something unthinkable happened. As he was scraping the sword along the ground, it hit something before turning into dust. What has happened? Thor asked what happened to Searcher's weapon. He followed up looking at Hela then at his team. It was the black shield he created. It's one of the many abilities my beloved can use, Hela answered. Kashina was all smiles reading that line much to Hela and Minato's amusement. Hela could see where he got some of his more enjoyable personality traits from. Yes of course it is isn't it? Loki asked rhetorically. Seriously how many abilities did this man have? Loki glanced over at the shinobi who all shrugged, they didn't have a clue anymore. 
Naruto just seemed to perpetually grow in skill and power over time. Over in center of Asgard the blonde was looking up at the giant as if appraising him. Well you're bigger than last time that's for sure. The blonde commented. Not that it'll make much a difference for you though. Rather than answer Sir Tor brought his hands up high in the air preparing a hammer fist. At least that was the plan. Seeing what was to come Naruto once more activated the stone and disappeared from his spot before reappearing above them. Once more creating a truth-seeking orb he changed it into the shield once more and thrusted straight into the giant's arms. Sir Tor moves way too slowly for him to stand a chance against Naruto, Sasuke commented. Yeah this won't be much an actual fight I bet. More of a one-sided beatdown. Sakura agreed. He is the fastest shinobi in history, Kakashi added in. Minato's eyes widened before a conflicted expression of pride and defeat slipped onto his face. The effect was immediate, his arms all the way to the elbow turned to dust. The giant let out a monstrous scream not in pain but in anger. Willing the stone to send him back to the floor he activated his magnet release once more while the beast was screaming. That power is terrifying. Odin commented. Bet that helped in your decision. Hila huffed. Yes. The man simply replied. As he raised his arms in the air, the destroyed pieces that were buildings of Asgard levitated into the air around him. He created five giant nails out of the debris and made a motion with his hand. All at once the five pieces flew to the giant. Two impaling him on each leg before the final one embedded itself in his chest. It's unreal. Minato said in a bit of awe at his boy's power. His face was split with a broad grin. That's my son. Kashina grinned. They realize he is effectively using a destroyed city to nail a living being to the ground right? Loki asked in wonder. Oh they know. I am going to get along well with mom and dad, I think, Hila said with a smile. Now to finish him off, he commented. He smacked the bottom end of his staff into the floor and allowed himself to be pulled into the portal once more. He reappeared in front of the now kneeling Sir Tor and brought his hands up in a single hand sign. Senpo. Ranton Kuga he thought before releasing a very sharp and thin stream of light from his mouth. He twisted his head back and forth rapidly and was pleased as the beam easily cut the giant in half at the waist and removed its head from the body. The head dropped down and landed with a very hard thud which left a small crater in the ground. The blonde approached it before turning it to dust with a simple thrust of his arm. With the crown of Sir Tor having been reduced to dust, the eternal flame which had powered the man was put out. Well, that's that then. Sakura said in mild disbelief. She had known he had become incredibly powerful but to end an apocalyptic threat like it was child's play. It just left her a bit numb really. Within seconds all that remained of the giant was bones and ashes. Asgard for the most part was intact with the exception of the few buildings he managed to destroy. Having finished what he had come to do he tapped his staff and was once again being pulled into the portal. Back on the bridge both Thor and Loki were staring at the distance in disbelief. That shouldn't be possible. The God of Thunder said out loud. At that moment their final team member joined them on the bridge. Thor. What happened to Sir Tor? She asked as she jumped high into the sky before landing next to the brothers. One moment she saw the giant prepare to destroy the city and the next he was gone. As she moved her gaze from where Sir Tor had been she realized that the two weren't fighting against Hela like she had expected. She was about to ask about this when she stopped dead in her tracks. Next to the goddess of death a portal opened up and out of it came someone she had hoped to never see again. Her eyes widened and her mouth dried up. She tried to talk but no words would escape her. Even the sound of Thor's voice asking her what's wrong couldn't help her. All she could think about was the day she and her sisters in arms were decimated by Hela and the blonde. How easily he had brushed them off. Hela was powerful yes, but the blonde was on a completely different level. Valkyrie. That finally got through to her. I don't know what has you so shaken up but fear not. We're close to resolving the problem. Hela's husband is surprisingly a lot more reasonable than she is. Thor told her. Thor winced as he had a better point of view on the situation now. Well, began Loki watching you take care of that pile of bones was entertaining but we do have matters to attend to. So do we have a deal? He asked. The blonde rubbed his chin in thought. What do you think? He asked turning to Hela. The goddess turned to the Asgardians and stared at them for a minute before speaking. That depends. Will Asgard be left under my rule? She asked the trio. As long as you honor your part of the deal we'll leave Asgard to you. Thor conceded. 
Not exactly how I imagined this playing out but very well. We have a deal. Naruto said. As the words left the blonde's mouth Loki let out a breath he didn't know he had been holding. They had really lucked out, had it been someone more arrogant or power hungry he doubted things would have gone this smooth. He is a blessing in disguise. Loki said with Thor nodding along and even Odin begrudgingly agreeing. PFF. What disguise? Hela asked. Kashina grinned at that. Her boy knew how to pick them it seemed. Naruto turned to Hela and nodded in the direction of the undead warriors who were still in a deadlock with the remaining Asgardian forces. Understanding what it was that he wanted of her she walked forward towards her army. Though they had a truce at the moment the Asgardian trio were still on very high alert as she passed by them. Halt. She commanded. The battle is over. Pull back. Her army followed her order obediently and began walking back towards Asgard. Thor walked up as well and said his piece. Citizens of Asgard, we have come in agreement. Hela will be the new ruler of Asgard. Seeing that some people were getting wide-eyed he quickly continued. But worry not as I shall be around to make sure she keeps her end of the agreement. He added successfully calming the crowd down. Now please. Let us make our way back to Asgard. An hour later the group of six, since Banner had finally landed, were in the throne room. The room was missing a ceiling as Thor and Hela had destroyed it during their battle earlier on. The goddess wasted no time in taking her spot on the throne. Naruto took his spot standing besides her and crossed his arms, his staff still in hand. The picture of power and grace, Hela said gleefully. This is going to be an insufferable time, Loki commented. All right. Time to keep your part of the deal. Naruto told Loki who is it that's coming after the Infinity Stones. As Loki was about to answer they noticed that the sky above them was getting darker and in seconds Asgard was covered in darkness. Jumping onto the roof of the building they noticed a ship slowly coming down. It was many times larger than the ones the Asgardian people were trying to escape in. Turning his attention back to the blonde he spoke. That would be the mad titan Thanos. Action after action. Can't they get a chance to rest? Kashina huffed. With that chapter complete, I believe it is time for you all to take a break. We shall return shortly. You will find spare rooms each as a bedroom marked with your name and has a conjoining master back, there is also plenty of foods and drinks to enjoy. The host said simply before seeming to stare at nothing with its dark cryptic eyes. Well, I for one could eat. Minato said. They have Asgardian, Earthling, and Elemental Nations food. Hela agreed happily, going for the ramen, her husband may have influenced her tastes to an extent. Having settled back into their seats after a hearty meal, most of the room stared at the odd pair of Kashina and Hila as they laughed and chatted in hushed tones, occasionally getting just loud enough for the others to make out their conversation. Between the no, he didn't, and the I'm not kidding he can be such a child. They knew the mother was soaking up stories of her son from his wife. It was a bit difficult for her to know other people knew her boy better than her, but getting to spend time with his wife was still a great time. Your attention please. We shall begin reading again. The host announced before snapping once more and causing the book to appear in Sasuke's hands. The Uchiha let out a long, suffering sigh while his teammates rolled their eyes at his reaction. He was reading about the future. How exactly did he manage to act completely uninterested? Thanos. Ha. Huh. The blonde says to himself as he watches the spacecraft hover above them. The citizens of Asgard had already ran into the city in a panic. The group watched as a blue beam shot out of the ship hitting the ground a few yards away from them. In a split second two figures appeared. The first was a ash-gray figure short in stature who had white hair slicked back. The man had no nose and wore dark gray armor with some gold trim. Gonna guess neither of those are this Thanos guy, Kashina said doubt it. Evidently he is some big purple being that appears to have a scrotum for a chin, Hela said flippantly. The Asgardian's younger brothers stared at her before glancing at one another. They had to wonder if they both had described him the same way. Unsurprisingly they most definitely had. The second was a tad bit taller than the first. He's a reptilian looking man with scales. He wore similar armor to the first though he left his left shoulder exposed and wielded a large metal chain hammer. So which one of these two is Thanos? Naruto asked Loki taking his eyes off the two. Neither. The god of mischief replied. These two are his children, he clarified. Really? Hela interrupted truly faces only a mother could love. She mocked. 
Naruto chuckled and was about to speak when he was cut off by the shorter of the two invaders. Oh, good one, though that might be generous, Kashina said with a giggle. How catty. I love it, Hila replied. Odin grumbled. No wonder Naruto and Hila hit it off so well. Oh come off of it Odin. You know we are dead and getting a new chance at life with all of this. We can actually be a happy family, for once. Frigga said frowning pointedly at the end. The one-eyed god simply grumbled more and crossed his arms. One Hila was bad enough. Add in another one with some of the abilities of his son-in-law, not to mention both women would have an extremely loyal and devoted Naruto around. Nearby Kakashi stared at Odin with a knowing look. He had to wonder, who did the supposed gods pray to when they wanted divine intervention in something? Hear me and rejoice. Began the short one. For your salvation has arrived. You will have the privilege of being saved by the great titan. And in your certain death, every last one of you will become children of Thanos. He continued. Today. Whatever he was going to say was stopped as Thor interrupted. Loki. Who the hell are these two? He asked. Ah, the son of Odin. My name is Ebony Ma and this is Cull Obsidian. The now named Ma introduced. We are the children of Thanos and we are here for one thing and one thing only. He said before pointing at Naruto's staff. The stone. Half of the room snorted in mild laughter while the other half scoffed. As if a lackey was threatening. Naruto lifted the staff up to his face and stared at the two through the C shape. You mean this one right here? He asked rhetorically while pointing at it. Yeah that's gonna be a no he says while resting it on his shoulder. Shocker. Sasuke chuckled. His old rival seemed to have picked up an additional helping of snark at some point. He could appreciate that at least. You have been going on for a bit about this, Thanos, though. He's the one that wants it right? Tell him to come down here himself if he wants it. Naruto challenged, the smile never leaving his face. Ma on the other hand did not look as happy. He narrowed his eyes and held his arms behind his back. Without turning to his partner he gave the order. Bring me the stone. This will be entertaining. Hila said with a smile. One that was nothing but teeth. Cull made a grunt of acknowledgement and slammed his hammer down before walking their way. Everyone but Naruto and Hila prepared for battle but were stopped as Naruto raised a hand. Cull sped up and jumped high into the air preparing to bring the hammer down. Move. Naruto ordered as they all jumped back. Not needing to use hand signs the blonde inhaled a deep breath of air before expelling it in short rapid bursts. The result was wind bullets traveling faster than the eye could see. Cull managed to shield himself from three using the hammer but was eventually hit by six of them in the chest. Naruto did not give him time to recuperate. He appeared in front of him and begun willing the air around them. He began making slicing motions with his hands in front of Cull. The mon's chest armor broke effortlessly as an X began appearing on his chest where the wind was cutting into him. Seconds later the wind had managed to completely cut through the man leaving only pieces of the scaled man remaining. No hand seals at all. Minato commented in joy. That's one thing, Naruto rarely uses more than one or two hand signs. His version of mastering a jutsu is that he can just use it with a thought. Kakashi explained. Do you know what they are talking about? Thor asked Loki. Loki simply gave him a look out of the corner of his eyes before he turning his attention back to the dark-haired shinobi. Thor huffed at being ignored but said no more. Now only one thing remains. Naruto said. Ma narrowed his eyes and raised his arms. Debris laying around began to levitate as the man prepared his attack. Naruto stared up at the ship before closing his eyes and activating his magnet release around the entire area. He raised his arm towards the ship, made a fist and began pulling. To everyone's amazement the giant ship began coming down before hitting the ground with a force that could be felt for miles. When the shaking stopped and the smoke from the impact cleared another blue beam hit the ground. This time a more imposing figure stepped out. His powers are amazing. Sakura said with a grin at the heights her brother figure had reached. Is this imposing figure that the book mentioned, Thanos? Minato asked. Wait for the description and we will see, Loki pointed out. A giant purple man stood tall. He wore golden armor with a matching golden helmet. On his left hand was a matching gold gauntlet. Though what caught everyone's attention was the bright purple stone shining from just above the knuckle. Ah, yep that's the one. Kashina said. And he already has one of the stones. Minato said with mild worry. That's Thanos Loki said in slight fear. 
Being around the Mad Titan always put him on edge. Don't worry baby brother your big sister and her husband will protect you, Hela taunted. I really don't think I can handle this family dynamic the god of mischief said. Cuz you are the baby of the family? Kashina asked, sounding almost genuine. More because it's recently doubled in size, with, no never mind. Loki wisely said as he noticed the narrowed eyes of Minato and Kashina. So you're the mad titan? Naruto asked stepping forward, staff still resting on his shoulder. He noticed the giant mon's eyes focus on the stone the whole time before focusing on him. That's the name that stuck with me in the past years so yes. You're an interesting one though. To be able to wield an infinity stone is not something just anyone can do. Who are you? Thanos asked. Naruto Uzumaki. The blonde answered. I'll try and remember that. Now you have something that belongs to me. Thanos said looking at the stone once again. This is awkwardly polite for two godlike powers squaring off, Sakura commented. Please, without those stones there is nothing godlike about Thanos, Hila corrected. It went without saying that she left Naruto out of that comment. Is that so? Funny. I was about to tell you the same thing, Naruto answered while pointing his staff at the gauntlet. The universe is going to be kind of boring with him in charge, Thor commented as the battles he sort of enjoyed would be a lot less common. Careful brother, you sound like a warmonger or something, Loki chided sarcastically. Oh? No plots against your sister and brother-in-law? Odin asked. Oh look daddy comes to the rescue of his favorite yet again, Hela jumped in. Sensei, your holidays are always going to be terrible, Kakashi said to his teacher quietly. That's where you're wrong Kakashi. Why do you think I picked your team as a janin? I thrive on this sort of stuff. Minato happily chirped back. The silver-haired man stared at his teacher for a while before sighing heavily. That explains way too much shit to me, he said turning his attention back to the story. I see. Ma, take care of the others. I'll get the stone myself. Ma nodded and began his attack while Thanos stared down the blonde. Naruto knew Thanos was on a different level than the other two. The way the man carried himself was proof of that. Most would be sweating in apprehension knowing that a titan was heading their way, but not him. PFF. Sakura said getting looks. Sorry, just the thought of Naruto backing down because of someone being tough. If he hasn't completely changed over time he'll probably be excited to the point he will be looking to jump his wife's bones afterward. Sakura explained. The room nodded and Sasuke prepared to continue reading before something clicked in his mind and he suddenly looked at Sakura more sharply. Sasuke. I'm telling this as your friend. You don't want to open that door, Kakashi said clearly. Sasuke looked at his teacher then back at Sakura who seemed to be caught up in a memory. That stung. Kakashi was probably right on this one though. After years of being sealed away and his power being unmatched in the world, he felt a shiver of excitement run up and down his spine. An opponent who would put up a hell of a fight. He was by no means a battle maniac but even he couldn't resist a good battle every now and then. He gripped the staff hard and the space stone began glowing, as if ready for the fight as well. Battle is exhilarating. Thor agreed. It can be. Minato added in. It can also be sickening. The ground underneath Naruto broke as he charged at Thanos. The mad titan's eyes widening at the speed. Naruto went for a punch that Thanos tried to anticipate but it was a fake out as Naruto twisted his body in to give a heel kick, but Thanos was just as quick. Grabbing Naruto by his heel. He started to spin, going so fast that all the others would be able to see was a golden purple blur. Wow, I didn't expect that purple thing to move so fast, Kashina said in surprise. Releasing Naruto, Thanos gave chase, striking Naruto while he was still flying until finally grabbing the man by the face and slamming the back of his head in the ground. All of them, including Odin, looked displeased at that. Usually that would have taken a normal person out, but not our favorite blonde. He did not even have time to reach for the staff as Naruto got back up rolling his neck with a cheeky smile not bad old timer. You ready to get serious now? Thanos gave a chuckle, taking off his armor bar his gauntlet. You have a lot of spunk warrior, I admire that. Something I used to have when I was younger. Oh god. Kakashi said as he saw the start of a possible rivalry brewing. He then rolled his eyes at the look sent him by Hila. Naruto was once again on Thanos, rearing his tight fist back as the Mad Titan did the same. A massive shockwave followed sending Asgardians flying. 
Thor could only look in awe at the powerful display in front of him. Loki watched in unease, hoping things would go his favor. If his brother-in-law couldn't beat the Titan, no one would. Hela watched in pride. Pride that her husband could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the most powerful beings in the universe and hold his own. The readers shared the same expressions with pride showing clearly on his parents' faces and as much as it was hidden behind its mask, Kakashi's face shared the same look. Sakura looked a little stunned though she knew Naruto was impossibly strong, and Sasuke was less than surprised though he couldn't help the twinge of jealousy at what his former rival has achieved. Standing in the middle of the busted street was the two. Naruto's fist meeting Thanos as the two battled for dominance. Then with a roar and a blinding light Naruto was in his most powerful form. His armor glowing white as his six paths power was activated for the first time in what felt like forever. With his now enhanced strength he sent Thanos skipping along the street from the power of his punch. That alone though would not be enough to stop Thanos. The man regained his footing and got on the defensive. Naruto appeared in front of him and began throwing combinations of punches and kicks which were deflected. Likewise Thanos tried using his bigger form to try and cause as much damage as he could. One of his punches was actually caught by the blonde before being tossed aside. The dynamic in the battle has completely shifted in Naruto's favor, Thor said. He has Thanos on the defensive already, Loki had witnessed it but sti it was a hard pill to swallow. Using that brief window did a jumping spin kick to the face that landed and managed to have the titan stumbling back briefly. He didn't have much time to recuperate thought as the blonde was on him. Naruto buried the staff into the ground at the handle and quickly launched four chakra enhanced punches to the chest and ribs in the blink of an eye. If the grimace on the titan's face was any indication he would say they were doing their job inflicting damage even through the armor. Calling his staff to him using his magnet release, in a split second, he thrusted forward using the curved end to grasp the mon's throat and lift him into the air. On his left hand a mini Rosenshuriken formed which was then flicked into the mon's chest sending him flying away before detonating creating a massive dome of energy. The dome glowed purple for a few seconds before dispersing. Thanos walked out of the attack, body releasing some smoke, and multiple cuts here and there along with a few bruises on his face but relatively okay. After all that and he just looks a bit roughed up, Sakura said in horror. Have faith in my husband, Hila said fully confident in Naruto. An interesting attack. He admitted it's been a while since someone was able to harm me this much. He added. The mad titan raised his gauntlet up and let the stone glow ominously. It seems I'll have to take this more serious than I anticipated. However, I'll give you one last chance to hand over the stone before I'm forced to take it from you. You know you never did say what you wanted the stones for. Enlighten me. Naruto said, his space stone matching the glow of the power stone. Well seeing as how you won't be alive much longer I'll humor you. The universe is overpopulated. Too many mouths not enough to go around. He began. Naruto nodded his head in agreement that there was too many people with not enough resources. With the infinity stones I can snap my fingers and half the universe will cease to exist. Some would call it genocide but I call it mercy. Saving them from imminent starvation. He finished. Right. What about after they're gone? People could just start reproducing again and this problem would repeat itself. See, I have a better idea. With the infinity stones I can create unlimited resources. Enough to go around for everyone. Is he going to? Sasuke began with narrowed eyes. It's likely. Sakura said simply. That would actually be the funniest way for this to end. Kakashi commented with a chuckle knowing what the two meant. I'd end world hunger, war over resources and much more which is why I'm going to have to take the stone from you," Naruto said as he spun the staff quickly before slamming it into the ground. If you do that all living creatures would depend on one being. They'd stop striving for greater heights. I'd love to continue a philosophical conversation but I have a universe to balance. I'll be taking the stone," Thanos said as a beam of purple light erupted from the gauntlet. Huh. Guess not. Kakashi said. Tisk, give it time. Sasuke knowingly said. He hadn't been persuaded the first time either. Narrowing his eyes Naruto spun the staff rapidly in front of him, similar to how he did to Thor and managed to hold off the attack. Unlike Thor's attack however, this had a lot more power behind it as he had to quickly step aside as the attack became too much. Had he held on longer the staff would have broken. He ducked quickly to avoid a power stone enhanced punch before smacking away another fist, returning one of his own. 
It made contact but didn't stop the titan. He had to hand it to him, even in his rusty six paths form the man could still hold his own. That's just scary actually. Minato quietly stated having seen the six paths himself. He threw a straight right which was caught by Thanos before being his with an infinity stone enhanced left head which sent him flying. The mad titan wasn't finished as he rushed forward and once more let off a purple beam of energy from the gauntlet. This time, the beam hit its target. Naruto grit his teeth as his body was no longer in peak condition to handle the six paths form at the moment and the concentrated energy from the infinity stone was doing more damage than it should have. He barely managed to leap to the right to avoid an energy blast but was caught by a kick to the chest by the giant. His back hit the solid gold wall of a building which managed to stop him from being sent further. He's doing this well against Thanos with a handicap. Thor realized feeling incredibly smaller than he had before being brought to the Nexus room. Damn he's powerful enough on his own. That stone just amplifies his power even more. Gonna have to end this. He thought as he brought his right hand up. On his fingertips five different colored spheres materialized, each being a different element combined with a mini rosin shuriken. He slammed the staff into the ground before tossing the spheres into the portal that had opened. Sometimes I forget just how much of a genius you actually are, Naruto. Kakashi chuckled at the new technique being used by the blonde. Getting his bearings together he flew forward and met with the titan once more. He landed and blocked two punches before kicking the man in the chest sending the man stumbling back slightly. Taking a deep breath he exhaled it all in one breath releasing a single line of pressurized air. Thanos saw it coming and managed to duck. Had he turned around he would have seen pieces of some of the buildings of Asgard being sliced like butter. As he looked up he noticed the blonde was missing. He realized too late to look behind him as he felt a sharp pain on his spine. The blonde had hit him with the bottom end of the staff right in the center of his back. Even with the special armor the staff managed to break through and make contact. The group awed at Naruto's abilities. Healthy fear and respect for him grew in all of their hearts and a certain goddess of death locked her lips at the showing of power from her lover. Naruto saw the titan drop to a knee as a result of the chakra enhanced stab to the back and saw it as his best opportunity to end it. He teleported in front of Thanos and delivered a strong enough uppercut to the chin that managed to lift the man into the air. He slammed his staff into the floor and opened a portal above the man. Out of it came the five orbs he had previously created. At point blank range Thanos didn't have the time to protect himself and could only brace himself for the impact. Not wanting to be caught in the attack the blonde allowed himself to be pulled backwards into the blue portal and got out of the area. He is able to think up such elaborate and devastating strategies on the fly. Odin said in mild awe. He had forgotten to an extent his son-in-law's skills. He hated to admit it even mentally, but Naruto was like a perfect combination of his three children. Naruto reappeared a couple thousand feet away where the others were battling Ma. Everyone turned when they felt the ground shake followed by a big explosion. So I take it Thanos has been handled darling? Hela asked. She noted he had some bruising in the face along with some bits of his amor broken. He spit up a bit of blood. Is it weird that seeing him fresh from a fight kind of, Hila wondered aloud. Not at all, when Minato would come back from battle, M. Kashina said. The same for me and your father. You probably don't want details, but there is just something about your man coming back and needing a bit of tender care while having that powerful energy from victory about him. Frigga stated as her eyes flashed with remembered moments from eras ago. The majority of the room shifted awkwardly as the three women easily grew friendlier with one another. Sakura especially as she wanted to be a part of the little group. Should be. He's really durable. Took some of my powerful attacks head on and still fought like nothing happened. We'll find out in a few. He asked before looking at a panting ma who was floating atop of a piece of debris. You guys having trouble with him? He asked as he began to float. It's his telekinesis that's the problem, Thor answered. Hum. Naruto needs more powerful allies. Sasuke commented getting a series of glares. I didn't mean you. He needs more along with you the other two won't cut it, he said looking at Hela. Oh. Well then, yes I agree. Hela nodded causing Thor and Loki to lose their glares for exasperated looks. He has great control over it. Once we get too close he simply levitates and uses the surrounding area against us. Loki answered. He was going to add more when they had to move out of the way of a purple beam. Ma widened his eyes at what he saw and quickly rushed to his master's side. Thanos stood in front of them once more, though not as he had before. 
The man no longer had most of his upper body armor. Only a small bit remaining on his left shoulder. His helmet all but gone. He was sporting multiple burns along his body and the front of his forearms were cut up so badly you could no longer see his purple skin on them. He's lucky to be alive. Still he took that attack better than I imagined he would, Minato said. Master are you alright? Ma asked as he levitated objects around them to act as protection. Taking a few deep breaths the man replied. All live. It seems I greatly underestimated not only his strength but the control he has over the space stone. We're going to have to return for it some other time. This greatly shocked Ma as he'd never seen his master retreat, but he was not one to question orders. Thanos flexed the gauntlet and let off a powerful scream before slamming a fist to the floor. The ground shook and exploded, the shockwave destroying everything in its path courtesy of the power stone. Naruto and the group had no choice but to move as to not be hit. In that time Ma and Thanos were beamed back into their ship and quickly began ascending back into the sky. Damn. At least they stopped Thanos from getting another stone. Loki grumbled but tried to reassure himself. In time Thanos won't stand a chance. Naruto was handicapped for this battle, Hela said. But the Mad Titan will grow stronger with time as well, Thor said with a grin look on his face. Should we try and stop them? Asked the Valkyrie as they were running. No answered Naruto. I've reached my limit for now. I've been sealed for too long that my body won't handle my full power at the moment. I can still access my most powerful form but it doesn't do the same damage it used to. We'll have to let them go for now. He'll be back. That will be something to see. Minato said somewhat excited to see his son truly go all out. Finally they turned back and saw that they were in the clear. A large part of Asgard had been turned to rubble but nothing that couldn't be rebuilt. This is bad. Loki began. He'll see you as a major threat now. I'm certain he's going to collect the other stones before saving you for last. Once the other five four are in his possession he'll be almost impossible to deal with. Even if you have a stone. Then we'll have to stop him from getting the others or at least beat him to some of them. Hela responded. Do any of you know anyone who might have some information? She asked her brothers. It's kind of like an adventure story starting. This will be even more fun than I thought. Kashina commented excitedly getting a grin from her husband as he agreed. They said nothing for a moment before the god of mischief smiled. Actually yes. Everyone turned to him. As a matter of fact my brother happens to know of a few people who might be able to help us out. Thor's eyes lit up as he knew who his brother was talking about. Yes Loki is right. He said before turning to one person who seemed really out of place. Banner. Looks like we're going to be meeting with the Avengers. He said happily. Well that is an interesting name. Kakashi commented. Fitting though. Thor said. Yeah, cause they avenge things rather than save them. Sniped Loki getting a heated glare from Thor. Who are the Avengers? Naruto asked in confusion. Having never heard of the group, Hela shrugged her shoulders equally confused. They're Earth's mightiest heroes, Thor replied. They'll be of great help I promise you. Alright, so where is this Earth? Naruto asked ready to go. It's Midgard, Hela answered. Oh, we'll have to use the Bifrost then as I don't know exactly where we're going so I can't use the stone, he said. Wait, I just realized that stone essentially lets him use the Hiraishin without tags. Minato said excitedly. Min Kashina began. No I mean actually even better it's amazing. Oh I'm so proud and jealous, but mostly proud of course. Minato rambled. Why can't you be a cute father like him? Hila asked. I am a warrior and a king. Odin said gruffly. I mean he pretty much is too though. Butchering armies single-handedly, ruling as an absolute monarch till death or abdication, she pointed out. Read the story. Odin huffed at Sasuke. I'm not one of your subjects, old man. Sasuke snarled. Sasuke please. Sakura asked. Whatever, the Uchiha said. Odin simply glared while mentally complaining about the youth always being such a pain. Very well. I don't believe we damaged it during the battle so we should be all set. Let's be off. Thor said as they began walking. As they walked Naruto couldn't help but wonder what kind of beings were in Midgard. If Hela's brothers knew them then they must be powerful. He shook his head of those thoughts. He wrapped his arm around the goddess of death and continued their walk. All he knew was that he had infinity stones to collect as his greatest battle was rapidly approaching. Ah even while just walking holding onto each other like that. 
Kashina cooed. He is very handy and touchy-feely. It took getting used to but I wouldn't have it any other way now I suppose, Hila said with a placid smile. You may take another break if you wish. The host declared as the book disappeared from Sasuke's hands with a snap and a flash. The readers once more began to settle into their seats. Thor and Loki had started to get to know their sister and in-laws a bit better and truth be told they were very pleasantly surprised. Minato and Loki surprisingly hot it off, especially when they realized they were both far more similar than could have been expected. After all, much to Kakashi's horror Kashina wasn't the truly chaotic half of the couple. Minato was just very good at masking it, much like Loki. Now with most of the readers in a decent and happy mood and Kakashi's vision of the world effectively ruined as he realized the true nature of his teacher and just how well he fit with Kashina and Naruto, they readied for the next chapter. Who was getting the book this time Mr. Host? Kashina asked with a happy smile. Hum, Frigga. The host replied blandly as he snapped his fingers, materializing the time in the woman's lap. Very well then. The Asgardian queen said as she cracked open the book and moved to the proper position. The group had finally made it down the bridge that led to the Bifrost. Scourge had made good on his word to get the sword that activated the Bifrost earlier. Right before the sword was inserted Loki stepped forward. Wait. He ordered. Everyone's attention turned to him wondering why he stopped them. I just remembered something important. He said with a sly smile. I know where we can get another stone. It's with a man called, the Collector he reveals. Excellent. That means we will have a possible advantage over Thanos, right? Thor asked. Hopefully, but as with everything we do, I highly doubt it will be that easy, Loki remarked. Well, you do have myself and Naruto alongside you now. It shouldn't be that bad, Hila commented. Team 7 collectively snorted at that. Something to say? The new queen of Asgard asked with narrowed eyes. Not really, just that all of our team is cursed. We can't go out on any mission or really do anything without something going wrong and it becoming a hundred times harder. Sakura explained while Kakashi and Sasuke both nodded along. Hila pursed her lips but Naruto had told her stories of his outlandish adventures as a boy and young man, they were probably right. Which stone? The blonde asked. The reality stone. It has the ability to control and warp reality to a frightening degree. The trickster explained. That could be useful. Last thing we need is to let Big Purple get his hands on that, Naruto said. I'd rather not think of how powerful Thanos could become with it in his possession. Problem is the Bifrost doesn't connect to where he is. We can't get to the Collector without a ship, Thor tells them, frowning slightly. Are there any more ships besides the one Naruto sort of smashed up? Minato asked. The group collectively shrugged. Who knew what the state of Asgard's ships were at that moment? Loki Naruto says getting the mon's attention. Where is this collector located? He's currently on nowhere. He's keeping it in his museum. I'm positive if we show up and demand the stone he'll hand it over. If not we'll tell him Thanos is coming and he'll take it anyways. I am sure he'll see it our way, he answered. Nowhere is still around huh? Naruto said, mostly to himself as he'd been there before he was sealed away. Luckily I know where that is. He added before turning to Valkyrie and Bruce. Will you two be joining us? Wow something weird is going to happen soon, Kakashi commented. How so? Loki asked. It's going way too smoothly, Sakura added in. Oh yeah. Kakashi agreed. Valkyrie didn't give a verbal response but nodded positive. While they may be on the same side, being in such close proximity to the couple made her all sorts of nervous. One didn't forget the kind of power the carefree man had. PFF, grow up girly. Kashina said with a wave of her hand. Thor leaned in to whisper to his brother. She does realize Valkyrie is several lifetimes older than she is, correct? Thor, you are the last one that should question the sanity and knowledge of others. Loki said sourly before turning to look at his mother. Please keep reading, mother. It had a few extra listeners but both Loki and Frigga recalled the frequent amount of times she read a bedtime tale to him as a boy. And you? He asked the man. Banner stayed quiet for a minute thinking it over. He took a quick look at Thor before making up his mind. I think it'd be better to send me back to Earth. Thor nodded at this and followed up. Hum. I think I would have liked having him at my side for a change. Loki commented. He then glared at Thor who snorted as he recalled why it was that Loki thought that way. I agree. 
You can fill our friends back on Earth in on what's going on. Warn them of the upcoming battle. He motioned Bruce to walk forward. Bruce stood tall and waited for the bridge to connect. Once ready a great bright light erupted and propelled him forward before shutting off. All right. Banner has been sent back to New York. He'll fill the Avengers in on what's going on. The more allies we have, the better. The God of Thunder says. That is a good play. It seems to me that this Thanos already has his own set of subordinates and perhaps even an army at his beck and call. You'll need more than just quality to face him properly. Minato nodded along with the actions of those in the story. Naruto has proven in the past that quantity has a quality all its own. Sasuke said with his own thoughtful nod. Naruto nods. All right, let's go see the collector. He slams his staff down opening a blue portal in front of the group. As they're walking through Naruto turns to his wife. Don't you want to stay and run Asgard? He's right. All that violence to become queen and you're leaving. Kashina said in surprise. It's no big deal. Asgard is safe and rebuilding and my husband is up to an adventure. Of course I want to be there with him. Hila commented. Kashina nodded in understanding before looking over to her husband. She blinked at the sight of him mumbling. Minato. She asked. How could I forget about the portals already? I wonder if I could mimic that ability with seals. I mean I can already teleport via the Hiraishin but I need a marker. That doesn't seem to need such an anchor, Minato mumbled. Kashina sighed knowing they had lost her husband to his own thoughts. She simply waved for the other mother in the group to begin reading again. This shouldn't take too long. They can make do without me. Once we come back I'll begin renovations on this place. She answered before stepping forward. Shrugging the rest followed suit, the portal closing behind them. The group reappeared out of the portal on the severed head of a celestial being, now known as Nowhere. Naruto and Hila looked around, taking in the sight. This place had sure changed since the last time they'd seen it. The couple didn't have time for sightseeing though as Loki began walking forward, knowing exactly where they needed to go. I honestly thought nothing we would see here would top the weird shit we've seen in our lifetimes. Sakura said staring at the planetoid-sized severed head. A. Hey, somehow I feel pretty numb to this kind of thing by now, Sasuke commented. You know what that is fair, I guess, Sakura replied. We got lucky you teleported us here. We're not that far away. Loki informed them as they walked. Kashina rolled her eyes as Minato fell even deeper into his mumbling and mental note-taking. Precision of entry also needs to be taken into account, he said quietly. The group walked for half an hour before finally reaching their destination. A giant glass-domed building located almost in the center of nowhere. It's here. The blonde alerted the group. He didn't know exactly how he knew but he got the same feeling now as he did when he noticed the blue cube after being freed. Of course he senses them. Odin said less than pleased. At least it was better than Thanos having the stones. Naruto found it somewhat strange that there seemed to be no security but hey he wasn't complaining. The group entered the building and the blonde couldn't help but be amazed at some of the things he saw. This collector sure had some cool display pieces. As they headed deeper into the building they finally began hearing noises other than their own footsteps. Walking a bit further and they heard a voice. Well, what a surprise. The group looked to their right to see a man walking their way. The man had on some interesting clothing, as he wore a red shirt with a white fur coat above it. He had matching white hair as well as a black line running down the center of his mouth. The three children of Odin. He says noticing Hela with them. The two brothers were surprised that the collector knew of their sister when they themselves didn't until recently. A Valkyrie. He said noticing the woman before finally turning his attention to the blonde. I feel a bit uncomfortable with the way he is looking at everyone, Sakura admitted. Well he is the collector. That doesn't really imply restrictions on what he collects. Loki commented. The shinobi made disturbed faces as they shared a glance. Yeah this collector was not someone that they approved of. As well as Hela's husband Naruto Uzumaki. The collector finished. Naruto smiled. You know my name? He asked rhetorically. I'm honored he added. Finally someone knew of him. No the honor is mine. The collector returned. It's not every day you get to meet someone as powerful as yourself. Naruto was now beaming in pride and was about to respond but was cut off. Hila pretended to poke her husband's head with a finger miming a balloon popping getting Kashina to giggle alongside her. Alright that's enough. I don't need him getting a bigger head, 
she said. She knew this would get to the mon's head if it continued. They needed to get back on track. You have something we need. She finished. At this Naruto moved his hand down the staff enough to display the glowing blue gem. Seeing the collector's eyes on the stone Thor spoke. The mad titan Thanos is on a quest to obtain the infinity stones. We can't allow that to happen. The collector nodded slowly before rubbing his chin. The mad titan you say? Yes, I've hear whispers that the man has been visiting planets, wiping out half the population. It's been going on for a while now. I figured he was looking for something. Now it all makes sense, he said softly. He's committing genocides before even having the stone. He is a vile bastard through and through, Kashina grumbled. Seeing that the man knew what was going on Thor continued. We need the ether. Thanos is coming and we can't let him have the stone. The collector exhaled softly before looking at them. I'm sorry but I can't just give one of the most powerful objects in the universe away. Not for free at least, he finished. Does he really think he has a choice in the matter? Sasuke asked incredulously. My darling H. Sold twist his nasty little head off and just take the stone, but I doubt that is how he will handle it. Even now Naruto was far more kind and merciful than she approved of being. That being said it added to the charm that he possessed. Looks like we'll need another way to convince him then. Loki said smiling mischievously. How about this then? Naruto began you can give us the ether and keep your life. Or you can try and take your chances with Thanos when he comes looking for you in which case you'll most likely die a painful death. Either way you're gonna hand it over. So what will it be? As he finished his ultimatum the group surrounded the man waiting for an answer. That surprises even me. Hila said at Naruto's ultimatum. Though she smiled at the words he used. It was a treat to see him be so commanding and dominant. The collector looked around at all of them, seemingly unfazed. However, if one were to look into his mind they'd see how nervous he actually was. He couldn't think of anyone who could take this group on at once and win. Very well. He conceded. The man walked back to a desk and pressed some buttons before a secret compartment opened from said desk. Reaching down he pulled out a black and red box before presenting it to the group. As Naruto was about to reach for it though, he pulled it back. I do have one condition. I want your word that I'll be protected from the mad titan when he comes. Naruto smiled before reaching into one of the compartments of his armor. Pulling his hand out he revealed a three-pronged kanai. The room jerked their heads to stare at Minato as he let out a small squeal of delight. Is that going to happen any time he uses one of Minato's abilities? Hila asked. Probably, but it's cute to see him so excited, Kashina said lovingly. Deal. When he comes just throw this on the ground. It'll let me know you need me and with the space stone I'll be here. There was another use for that but I never got around to actually mastering the technique required for it. He told him. The collector took the kanai, inspecting the script on it before nodding and placing it on his desk. With that being done he presented to box to the blonde. Not wasting time the blonde took the box before raising it up to eye level. He could feel the presence of the stone, it seemed like the box was a medium for the stone as the cube was for the space stone. Holding the box with both hands he began pushing large amounts of chakra into it. The box began to glow a brighter red and soon the entire building began to rumble. The readers felt slight awe as the simple act of opening the e-container seemed to be a Herculean feat. Almost there. He thought to himself. This one was a little more difficult than the cube, but it would break all the same. Soon the place shook as the box finally had enough. A bright red light filled the museum followed by a loud explosion that managed to crack a few windows of the display pieces. When everything settled the box was no longer present, instead a single red stone rested on the palm of the blonde's hand. You've done well Loki. Complimented Hela as she admired the stone. Even she could feel the power this stone possessed. Unlike the space stone this one had a stronger aura. Yes, you have done excellently, little brother. Our family grows in power with a single act thanks to your knowledge and Naruto's power. Hela commented, getting Loki to smile slightly. Perhaps this new arrangement wasn't so bad, he somewhat liked being complimented by his elder sister. Bringing the staff close to the stone Naruto quickly slammed the stone just underneath the space stone. The staff began glowing red with some bits of blue as it integrated itself into the staff. The glowing lights quickly went down the staff, into the blonde's arms before going up near his head. Naruto gripped the staff harder, threw his head back, and inhaled deeply as the power began coursing through him. 
Seconds later it calmed down and he allowed himself to exhale. That was a rush. He commented I bet. Sasuke mumbled a bit jealously. He would always thirst for power to an extent but seeing Naruto growing even stronger was a conflicting issue for the last Uchiha. The collector was looking at the blonde wide-eyed before his attention went to the staff. Amazing. He whispered to himself. Not once have I seen someone wield more than one stone at a time. Truly amazing. He finished. It is rather impressive. Frigga said as an aside before she turned back to the book. Naruto stared at the stone. All right let's see if you're the real deal. He slammed the base of his staff to the ground and immediately a thin red veil appeared seemingly out of thin air moving across the entire room. All people present followed the red veil as it moved and quickly noticed the scenery around them changing. They were no longer in the collector's museum. It looked like they were no longer on nowhere. Where are we? Thor asked as he walked forward, feeling the buildings around them and touching the floor to make sure it was real. He patted a building wall a few times before taking another look around. They seemed to be in some sort of village by the looks of it. Off in the distance he could see a giant stone monument with several faces carved into it. Hela too noticed the monument and immediately spotted a familiar face among them. This is your home, she pointed out. Konoha. The shinobi cried in surprise. He remembers it in such detail after so long. Odin mumbled in shock. Of course, our homes are a part of our very beings after all. Hela commented. That was especially true for herself being as she was tied to the fate of Asgard on a level beyond most comprehension. Yeah. He said softly before cutting off the stone's flow of power. The red veil appeared before them, moving backwards once again revealing the collector's museum. Well, we got what we needed. A pleasure meeting you collector. As agreed if you need me you know how to get me. Let's go. He said as he activated the space stone and teleported everyone away. As they arrived back in Bifrost in Asgard Naruto chuckled. What's so funny? Loki asked. I can only imagine how mad Thanos will be when he finds out I beat him to the stone, he said and continued laughing. Some of the group grinned, especially Loki and Hela. I like this family so much more, Loki almost silently said. Loki chuckled nervously before walking with Thor to the sword that activated the Bifrost. Our family just seems to get crazier, he commented. Our new brother-in-law seems to find amusement in upsetting one of the most powerful beings in the universe, he added shaking his head. Thor laughs before taking a look over at the blonde who was talking with Hela. I agree he's a strange one, but he's powerful there's no denying that. We'll have to get used to it brother, he said before getting everyone's attention. You all are getting along so well already. It makes me very pleased, Frigga said softly causing the three Asgardian children to smile back at her even Hela despite hers being slightly smaller. Thoughts of a new opportunity at life, at being a family together filled her head, she just wanted Naruto to be there with them as well. All right, we need to head for New York. I'm not sure how much time has passed on Earth while we were in nowhere but we need to regroup with Banner and the Avengers, he ordered. I'll be staying behind this time, Hela said as she began walking towards the bridge back to the city. Since Surtis and Thanos managed to wreck a large portion of Asgard my powers have taken a hit. We must begin reconstruction at once, she clarified. Ah, but you two are so cute together. I want to see more of you being all sassy toward that purple guy, Kashina pouted. Hela simply chuckled as she patted the redhead's hand, she reminded her so much of her favorite personality traits possessed by Naruto. I'll be staying as well, added the Valkyrie. Now that I'm here on Asgard again there's some things I need to tend to, she said before heading out. Naruto nodded in agreement, as did the rest of the group. I'll close the Bifrost, Hela said. Maybe this time we'll make it through peacefully. Loki commented looking at his sister. Hela just smirked at him before giving Naruto a peck on the mouth and sending them on their way. Once gone the goddess of death began her trek back to Asgard. Now where is Scourge? She asked out loud. Never a moment's rest for a ruler, Hela sighed playfully. That's not a joke, Minato and Odin said simultaneously, causing each to stare at the other. The two brothers and their brother-in-law were content to take their trip through the Bifrost in peace and quiet. That was until Naruto realized this was the first time he was with the two while not fighting. He figured this would be a good time to connect with Hela's brothers. So, what are your hobbies? He asked trying to make conversation. Thor and Loki looked at each other wondering where that came from before Loki realized what was going on. 
Hila smiled while shaking her head and Kashina and Sakura giggled at the attempt. He chuckled it's fine we really don't have to do this. The blonde was going to object but they had reached their destination. When the light died Naruto looked around and was going to ask where they were but was beaten to the punch by Loki. You three will become the best of friends, I can already tell. Frigga laughed as she flipped the page to continue reading. Why did we end up in the middle of a bunch of trees of all places? Didn't want to scare the public by appearing in the center of the city. Besides the Avengers headquarters isn't far from here. Thor explained. Can you use your magic to change our clothing brother? I suppose it is nice to see you cooperating with each other for a change. Odin said. This was a cakewalk for Loki. His magic was beyond powerful. Asking if he could change their clothing was almost insulting but he didn't comment on it and simply did as requested. His brother now had a tan jacket over a black sweater and black pants. Loki went with a more sophisticated approach and wore an all-black suit. After all showing up in New York with his armor on might slightly upset the citizens. So which one of you two is dressed normally here? Naruto asked. He hadn't been to Midgard in so long he didn't know how they dressed. He looked to Loki and decided he'd take a page from his book. All that time he spent around Hela and the color black really began to stick with him. Um. Hela hummed happily at the sight. Like what you see? Kashina asked. It's all right. I prefer him either in something more regal, or more revealing. Hela said, causing Odin to grimace and the other women to giggle. He used the reality stone to change his clothing to resemble that of Loki's. The staff was also now hidden from sight to anyone but himself. If one were to look at him they wouldn't see the staff. All right Thor, lead the way. The blonde said. Thor nodded and began walking off. As they exited the woods Naruto looked around and noticed there wasn't much around except one building. It seemed to be more of a compound, heavily guarded as there was people surrounding the area. Thor stopped walking and turned to his two colleagues. All right, you guys stay here. I'm going to go meet up with the team and let them know the two of you are here. Whatever you do, don't move. He stressed before walking off. They must be rather serious and tense people, Minato commented. Well, some of them are. Others are not serious, Thor admitted not sure how best to describe the snarkier members of the team. Loki looked over at the blonde for a second before hatching up a plan. Say Naruto, he said getting his attention. Thor is always so uptight. I think he needs to loosen up don't you think? He asked. Naruto looked to where Thor had went and remembered every conversation he had with the god. Sure enough he was mostly all business and fighting. Yeah I agree. Oh no Sakura sighed out. Oh yes, Kashina and Loki both chuckled darkly. How funny do you think it would be if we just appeared inside their headquarters before giving Thor could tell them why he brought us here? Loki asked again, a glint appearing in his eyes. Naruto's eyes widened. Do you want to prank Thor? He asked happily. A nod was his answer. Wow, you read him easily. Hila commented surprised by how easily her baby brother swept Naruto up into his plan. Inside the Avengers headquarters Thor was walking to the main room where the Avengers usually stayed. Along the way he was trying to think of exactly how he was going to explain why his brother and a superpowered being were here. Deciding he'd just figure it out as he went he pushed open the doors and saw Banner, Tony, Rhodes, and a young man he'd never seen before. Kid couldn't have been older than 15. Thor. Banner said as he stood up from his seat. Please tell me Thanos hasn't made another move. Thor laughed. No my friend he hasn't. Not that I'm aware of. We however have made a move. And what would that be point break? What? No hello. Tony said as he walked forward. Thor smiled happily as he saw his good friend for the first time in a while. Stark good to see you again my friend. He told the man. He turned to Bruce and asked. How long have you been here? Just a few days. So what is this move you guys made? Bruce asked. Oh right. That. Well we went to visit a man and managed to get another stone. He told them. Okay Banner kind of filled me in on the whole. Guy wants to rule the world scheme but I'm still missing some information. Who's we? Tony asked. Thor was about to reply when he heard two voices he really wished he hand it. This ought to be good. Kashina grinned devilishly. That would be us. Two voices said from besides them. To their left Naruto and Loki were sitting on some seats, both smiling like they hadn't just ignored what Thor had told them. Thor. Why is your brother here with some guy I've never met? 
Tony asked looking between Loki and Naruto. Damn you both. Thor whispered under his breath as he looked at the two men. This was not going to go well. He just knew it. Wait. That's the end. Not a single fight this chapter. That kind of censors. Kashina whined. I actually thought it was kind of nice to see them beginning to act like siblings, Frigga said. That's fair but I can't stop loving the sight of my baby cracking skulls. Kashina chirped in a far too happy tone. Let's skip the break this time and move straight on to the next chapter. Sasuke said. He wouldn't admit it out loud but he wanted more fights as well. Minato was rather pleased to be the one to receive the book next and begin reading. The host had acquiesced to Kashina and Sasuke's request to keep going. I thought I told you two to wait outside until I came to get you. Thor said clearly irritated. Loki and Kashina chuckled at that. Both were pleased to get to see the aftermath of Naruto and Loki messing with Thor. True brother. You did. Loki agreed but it started getting cold out there and we figured it'd be a lot warmer in here. Naruto nodded, agreeing with the black-haired god. Despite not knowing Naruto not a soul in that building was buying their story for a second. Okay. Somebody's gonna have to explain what's going on here. Pronto. Come on. Stark said with a clap of his hands. Having one of the most dangerous people the Avengers have fought along with a complete unknown was not something he was comfortable with. Naruto noticed that after the man had clapped his left hand was creeping closer to some sort of device on his chest. He briefly wondered what exactly that would do. He had to put his thoughts on hold as Thor began doing damage control. One of the most dangerous people they have dealt with, huh? Impressive praise from a former enemy, Loki, Hila commented. Yes, well I do suppose I aim to please. Loki replied with only a bit of sarcasm in his tone. All right. I'm sure all of you know my brother Loki. Said brother flashed a charming smile and waved. He was not surprised to find that no one bothered to wave back. Thor then pointed to Naruto this is our brother-in-law Naruto, he introduced. Thor averted his eyes from the glances sent his way. He wasn't the best when it came to names, plus Naruto's was a bit of a strange one. Uh it's Naruto. The blonde clarified. Thor looked at him with a somewhat confused expression. Yes. That's what I said. He replied before continuing. Anyways these are the Avengers. We have Tony Stark, known to the world as Iron Man. Rhodes known as War Machine. Then, he trailed off as he looked at the young boy. So he's new then? Minato asked. Yes. Answered though he was very intrigued by the young man. Noticing all the eyes on him the young man spoke. Oh hey I'm Peter Parker. Peter walked forward to be polite and shake their hands but was stopped as a hand fell on his shoulder. Uh uh don't get too close. One of them has tried to conquer earth before and the two get along so he can't be that much better. Tony says still cautious. Loki simply shrugged and Hela snorted at the Midgardian's actions. Had her beloved wished it there was nothing that could stop him from hurting the boy. Well almost. Seeing this Naruto raised his hands up to try and appease the man. I'm not here to conquer anything alright. He says before willing the reality stone to display his staff in his hand. Probably not the best idea since everyone not named Thor or Loki immediately got on guard. If I wanted to take over the planet or kill everybody I could have by now. He added before sliding his hand down slightly allowing everyone to see two glowing stones. Thor and Odin both rolled their eyes at the clearly smug expression on Hela's face. However some of the readers could tell she was almost disappointed they weren't watching Naruto take the planet in her name. Thor. Tony called are those what I think they are? He asked his eyes never leaving the glowing rocks. Thor laughed as he took in everyone's shocked reactions along with the young mons confused one. Yes my friend. Two infinity stones. The space stone as well as the reality stone. His voice then took a more serious tone. The mad titan Thanos is on a quest to collect all six of them. He says he plans of collecting the stones and then using them to decimate half of all living life in the universe. Naruto finished. And suddenly your conflicted past with them probably doesn't matter, Sasuke commented. What can I say, when things get tough I'm someone everyone wants on their side, Loki shrugged. Dear brother, be careful your head is starting to swell with hot air, Hila said with mild annoyance. Loki frowned but Frigga almost smiled at the sight of Hila curbing Loki's most fatal flaw. For the first time Tony actually looked serious as opposed to apprehensive, and you're trying to keep him from them. He asked how do we know you can keep those safe? 
Don't take it the wrong way but try and look at it from our angle. It doesn't sound smart to let someone we don't know go around collecting infinity stones, he explained. I mean, he makes a fair point, Sakura commented. Only because he has yet to see Naruto in action. Sasuke shrugged his shoulder. Well he has two stones already and so far hasn't killed anyone or taken over the earth. If he has control over space and reality I don't think it'd be relatively hard for him to do so. Not that I trust him or anything. Peter said adding that last part after being given a look from Tony. Oh I like this boy. Gila chuckled, getting snorts of humor and nods of agreement from the room. Well it's either that or we let Thanos get them. Loki added currently he's in possession of the power stone. If I were to wager I'd say he's out looking for the rest. No one said anything as they all thought over what they'd just heard. Tony rubbed his chin as he thought things over. Two people were hunting for the most powerful objects in the universe. There was only one way he could see this ending, and that was in an all-out war. He looked towards Rhodes and Peter before looking at his Asgardian friend. You trust him? He asked. Thor felt his sisters and her mother-in-law's eyes boring into him faintly and shifted uncomfortably from the sudden attention. Thor looked over at Naruto still slightly miffed about being put on the spot earlier but nods. Yes. He's faced Thanos once already and forced him to retreat. Besides, if Thanos gets the stones there's the possibility that he wipes out my sister in the process, and I know he won't stand for that. Tony walked over to a cabinet and took out a glass before filling it with some sort of alcoholic beverage. Gila looked displeased at the idea of being considered so simply eliminated by Thanos while simultaneously looking very pleased that her husband would clearly take on the Mad Titan just for her. Okay. So two stones are here, Thanos has the Power Stone. Vision has the Mind Stone. That leaves two stones unaccounted for. Tony explained as he took a drink. Yeah. The Time Stone and the Soul Stone are still unknown. Naruto replied. You said this Vision person has the Mind Stone. Where is he? If he could convince the man to hand it over it would be a huge advantage. Tony shakes his head we don't know. He and Wanda haven't been seen in a while. Many of the readers sighed. Why can't it ever be easy? Actually getting the stone from the collector was pretty easy. Kashina began to complain before realizing it had been pretty easy actually. Perhaps the others know where Vision is. Thor offered. Bruce looked uncomfortable as he stepped forward. Actually about that. The Avengers have disbanded, he told him. Bruce went on to reiterate the events that happened while the two were off planet. Everything from the Sokovia Accords to the disbanding of the Avengers when Tony and Captain America along with Bucky went at it. That could make it easier for Thanos and his subordinates when they attack, Kakashi murmured. Give Naruto ten minutes to talk at them and maybe someone tough to slap for a little bit. He'll get them back on board, Sasuke said with complete confidence. He'd seen and even experienced it firsthand after all. In the end nobody won. The Avengers disbanded and one of my friends was critically injured. He said motioning to Rhodes. The mood was solemn as those who were there were forced to remember the battle. Loki however leaned his head over towards Naruto. Sounds to me like Captain America won. He said quietly. Naruto had to stifle down a laugh as he knew now wasn't the time to let Loki make him laugh. He coughs quietly to get himself under control before speaking. Thor shot his brother a look but the god of mischief simply blinked innocently at him. Alright so there's three stones missing at the moment. I have a sneaking suspicion that Thanos may know where the soul stone is so he's most likely going there. Naruto told them. Do you have any way of getting in touch with the rest of the Avengers? He asked Tony. Tony looked uncomfortable and looked away not answering. Tony. Do you have a way to contact Steve and the others? Bruce asked once more. This divide between the Avengers group could prove to be a real issue, Minato hummed. Tony reached into his pocket and pulled out a phone before muttering yeah. You have to call them Tony. We need help, he continued. Seeing Tony not budge on the matter he got a bit angry. Tony. Every living thing in this universe in at stake. Put your pride aside and make the call. It's not that simple. Even if we did manage to get them to help us the government will still recognize them as criminals. They'd be arrested on sight. Tony replied as he looked at the phone. It's like their government wants to be conquered. What the hell were they thinking? Minato wondered. None of the others had any real answers. The full extent of what went on since he was last on Earth was lost to Thor. Damn it Tony. Bruce muttered. These accords really screwed it up for them. 
as if reading his mind Naruto spoke up. Not gonna lie Stark these accords you were all for were a stupid idea. Is there any way to overturn it? He asked. No the accords were ratified by over 100 countries. It could take years to get them to agree to terminate them. Rhodes informed them. Naruto was going to speak but stopped as he felt something. He turned his head to the right looking out the window before he felt a light pull again. It's worse than I thought. It really is going to be a pain in the ass for them. Kashina sighed. It might not matter for long if he is sensing some kind of danger. Sasuke commented as he leaned forward slightly. What's wrong? Thor asked. I'll be right back. Naruto muttered before tapping his staff on the floor and disappeared into the blue portal. Everyone looked to where Naruto once stood wondering just where he went. By any chance is there anything to eat around here? Loki asked. Everyone glanced at him but said nothing. Terrible hosts, your friends are Thor. Loki takes at his brother. He has a point. Not so much as an offered seat or drink. The Midgardians seem to have forgotten themselves. Hela hummed getting Thor to sweat lightly when he realized he didn't know for certain if she was making a simple joke or not. The blonde reappeared in the middle of a city. The strange thing was that it was nighttime. He looked around and noticed pieces of some of the nearby buildings on the ground. Clearly a battle had taken place here recently. As he was looking around he heard an explosion a few blocks away. Once again he disappeared into the portal and reappeared where he heard the explosion from. Teleportation is so unfair. Kashina grumbled. That's the truth. Sakura added. You both can use the body flicker technique though Minato began to say. It's not the same, Minato. Kashina said sounding almost offended by him. He just returned his focus to the book. Even married to her he had trouble handling her odd moods. He appeared inside a building on the top floor and watched as a battle took place below him. He noticed two alien-like figures that looked similar to the ones that had come with Thanos during their last encounter. The bigger figure had a scepter in his hand and was trying to either kill or capture a red humanoid figure. That's when he saw it. A yellow stone situated at the center of the man's forehead. So that's vision. He said to himself. He was expecting a man to be using the stone, not a man being kept alive by the stone. Fighting alongside him was a woman who seemed to have some sort of telekinetic powers. A blonde martial artist woman and finally a bearded man with a dark blue suit with a star on his chest. More of the Avengers I assume. Odin commented. Yes, technically. Thor said before thinking about the woman wielding magic. Currently the man was holding back a spear from taking his head off while the others were fighting the woman. Looks like it was time to step in. The moment his feet touched the ground everyone stopped what they were doing to see who had shown up. Are you two with Thanos? Naruto asked. The woman looked at him before looking at his staff noticing the two stones. She didn't answer and simply pressed a button on her forearm and her and her companion were engulfed in a blue light before they were taken away. So useful. Kashina said jabbing a finger toward the book. Ignoring that, now Thanos knows that Naruto is on earth with two stones, Sasuke said. Thanos knows Naruto would be searching for them as well. It was inevitable they would cross paths like that. Hila responded. Naruto looked at the remaining people before walking forward. As expected most of them tensed up, all except the one with the star. He stood still, didn't look phased but was clearly ready for anything. Naruto could respect that. Who are you? Asked the telekinetic girl as he hands glowed red. He noticed that a red hue had begun to appear around him as he was lifted into the air. Everyone watched in confusion as the blonde seemed to turn into red particles of light before he disappeared. Hela, Frigga, and Loki were especially interested in this girl's abilities. Smart of them to be at least on guard. I doubt it would do much but it's still a good showing, Kakashi said. Now now no need for all of that. They heard from behind them. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I'm a friend of Thor's. He told them as he realized if they were with Vision they must be the other members of the Avengers. He would have said Loki but chances are he wasn't too popular with them either. That could have been entertaining to watch though. I'd love to see the science experiment, the witch, the actual witch, and the red man get put into their place. Loki said with a smirk. Brother, this is why you struggle with making friends, Thor said with a sigh. Odd the future me seems to get along with our brother-in-law even better than you. Loki chirped back shutting Thor up and getting a chuckle from their sister at the by play. Finally one of them stepped forth. I'm Steve Rogers. You said you're a friend of Thor? He asked. 
friend, brother-in-law, take your pick. Just to make sure I'm talking to the right person, you're Captain America right? Of the Avengers? Naruto asked to make sure. You have me at a disadvantage. You seem to know who I am but you're unfamiliar to me. Cap replied. I actually just learned about you a couple minutes ago. I was talking with Tony Stark and Bruce about past events when I felt a spike of energy which I'm now sure was the infinity stone inside your head. He said pointing at Vision at the end. Which I'm assuming they wanted to take. I wish I could track infinity stones like that, Loki murmured. Why? You could wield one at most. Don't underestimate the sheer power those stones posses Loki, Hela commented. I can kind of see the resemblance to Odin now, Loki replied. Hurry up and read before the gods start fighting or something, Kashina mumbled to her husband. Captain America was going to ask how he was sure it was the stone that stopped as he finally noticed the stones. From the angle where he was he hadn't seen them when he forced the two aliens to retreat. They were indeed here for the mid-stone. What are your intentions? Vision asked. Originally I was going to ask the wielder of the stone to hand it over but it looks like that stone is what's keeping you alive, he answered. So the upfront and honest approach, it will probably work with them, just from what I'm seeing, Sakura said. Yet it remains terribly boring. The blonde woman stepped forward, a frown on her face. Okay hold on. You said you were with Thor, where is he? She asked. He's back at the Avengers headquarters. We need your help. He told them, though he was now looking at Cap as he seemed to be the leader. Help with what exactly? Cap replied. They are asking a lot of questions when there is clearly a crisis brewing. Would it not be better to gather everyone together and figure out the situation as one? Gila asked. Moving people together even if the group is small is not a simple task Gila. Odin scolded. Really? I've always seemed to have no real issue with it. Then again it has been quite a while since I wasn't sealed away. Perhaps I've forgotten the finer aspects of socializing, she said with. It's a pretty long story, how about we talk about this elsewhere? He could see the hesitance in their eyes, and he couldn't blame them. He was a complete stranger who suddenly came to their aid and had two infinity stones in his possession, one of which he was familiar with. All right how about I go get Thor if it'll make you guys a bit more at ease? He asked. Without giving them a chance to reply the blonde summoned a portal behind him and disappeared. He reappeared back at Avengers HQ and quickly scanned the room for the Asgardian. Thor, I need you to come with me for a while. Your friends aren't exactly trusting me right now. He told the man. Thor nodded and downed his beer he had been drinking before standing up. Hold it. Tony said. If Thor is going so is Loki. I don't know if he's turned over a new leaf or whatever but I'm not risking him staying here. The god of mischief just smiled, glad he could still get Iron Man on edge. No manners at all. Loki jeered. Not only Hela but Frigga quirked smiles at that while Thor snorted in humor. Alright fine. It'll make it a little more difficult but I can manage. Let's go. With that the three men disappeared from the room. Back with Captain and his team they all began to wonder what was going on. The blonde had told them that they needed the help of the Avengers but hadn't been specific. His thoughts were cut off as the blonde returned again this time with two familiar faces in tow. One of which they were not so happy to see. Immediately they were on guard as Loki stepped forward with Thor. Captain. Thor greeted with a smile it's good to see you again. Worry not about Loki, he will cause you no trouble. They look skeptical but trust his judgment. Thor it's good to see you. Cap replied before pulling the Asgardian in for a hug. An action that was mimicked by everyone at the scene. You are all much closer than I thought you were son. Odin commented. They are all some of Earth's mightiest heroes. It would be impossible for me to not at least greatly respect them. Thor replied. I'm sure you have some questions. All of which I'll be more than happy to answer. A warning, it's not a good situation we've found ourselves in. I wanted you to come to the Avengers headquarters to discuss the recent events but I've been told you're not allowed, he said with a frown. They may not be allowed at the HQ but I know somewhere we can talk, Naruto said as he opened a portal and stepped aside, motioning them in with his hand. Loki was the first to enter not even looking back. The rest followed after being reassured that he could be trusted. I have to say I am liking how well you and Naruto are getting along Loki. It gives me hope for our family, Frigga said with a soft smile. Hela nodded her agreement. The thought of a decent family was a tempting one. 
Kashina was just happy to see her son interacting so positively with people he could call family. Captain America looked around in both wonder and confusion at the semi-ruined city the blonde man had taken them to. All around he could see people working together to rebuild damaged buildings and streets. He looked up at some of the ones that were intact and was in awe at how much gold lined the city. Welcome friends, to Asgard. Thor announced or what's left of it at least. Come. It will be rebuilt even greater than before. With our true history on display, every aspect of it. Hela declared boldly. Odin surprisingly didn't argue. He was starting to see that he had been too hasty in dealing with Naruto and Hela. Perhaps it was time to bring about change in Asgard. It was about a minute walk before they entered a giant palace, gold lining almost every part of it. Though the deeper they got into it the more rubble they found. Finally they reached what Cap would guess to be the throne room. He had some knowledge on Norse mythology and the person sitting on the throne did not look like Odin. Instead he saw a woman in a black and green skin tight suit sitting cross-legged looking over a book. He quickly hurried his pace to walk alongside Thor and whispered isn't Odin supposed to be sitting there? Father passed away not too long ago. The man replied solemnly. Oh no. Anyway, Hela said boredly. I'm sorry for your loss. He too knew what it was like to lose people important to him. But shouldn't the throne go to you as his heir? He followed up. Yes but my sister and I came to an agreement and it was decided she would be the new ruler of Asgard. He told her. Steve turned his attention back to the woman and remembered what the blonde had told him. He had introduced himself as both Thor's friend and brother-in-law. He hadn't known Thor had a sister. Neither had I until a short time prior. Thor huffed faintly eyeing his father. Odin rolled his eyes. How did all three of his children become such melodramatic brats? We're back. Naruto announced as he walked up the stairs to the throne to greet his wife. She looks up from her book and greets him with a kiss before looking back at them with a seemingly uninterested look. So you are. She didn't ask but he knew her well enough to know she was curious about the others. Reading one another through looks alone. Cute. Kashina cooed. It was strange for most in the room to consider Naruto and Hila as anything nearing cute. Most thought more along the lines of homicidal or tyrannical. He stood to her right. These are Thor's allies from Midgard, he said. Steve, being the ever polite one walked forward and nodded. Your Highness, he greeted. The others followed suit but didn't speak. Hila raised an eyebrow and smirked at the display. Naruto had to hold back a groan as he knew this would do wonders for her ego. He is my favorite of your friends, brother. You may bring him to my kingdom to grovel as you wish, Hela stated. I remain alive and ruling Hela. Odin groused. Yet here I am free of any seal, maybe it's not long now, she said with a shrug. That he'll be alive or ruling? Thor asked only to deflate as he was ignored outright. I like this one, she said looking at Steve. Has Thor or my husband told you what's going on? She asked him, seeing him as the leader of the group. Not yet. Cap replied. We were brought here to get some answers. Darling. She tells Naruto. Nodding he begins to fill them in the same way he did with Stark and the others. It took well over half an hour to relay everything to them, stopping occasionally to answer questions from the group. A lot of words to say angry purple man with army is coming from magic rocks. Sasuke sneered. Well most of us have to communicate in more than grunts and glares to get our points across Sakura said before avoiding the Uchiha's eyes that looked toward her in shock. That's why they came for the stone, Vision commented. How many are left? Steve asked referring to the stones. Two. The time stone as well as the soul stone. Thor answered. We've come to the conclusion that Thanos must have an idea of where the soul stone is located and is heading to retrieve it as we speak. This is bad. Natasha said finally contributing to the conversation. From what you've told us it doesn't sound like he'll just sit back and allow you to keep the stones out of his reach. He'll target you again. This time he'll be stronger if he has another stone, she added. How kind of her to state the obvious to make sure we are all on page. Hila rolled her eyes at the woman. She was not among the favorites of her little brother's friends. He has an army. Loki told them when I invaded Earth Thanos was the one who gave me the Chitori. He has thousands under his command. Soon he'll call them to help him retrieve the stones. We'll be greatly outnumbered. Even with the Avengers as well as yourselves we can't take on an entire army along with a man wielding infinity stones. Vision commented. We'll need a lot more help. 
surely Thanos has made plenty of enemies in the past. Unite them and bring him down that way, Sasuke said. That only works if any of those enemies were left with the ability to pose a threat to him. I highly doubt that very many were. Minato corrected. Steve having been quiet nods to himself. I think I know where we can get it. He said before looking at Naruto. Do you know where Wakanda is? That's the end of the chapter. I assume you don't know where this Wakanda is? Minato asked the Asgardians. No, it's likely some nation on Midgard, Loki answered. Before the group could continue a set of lights illuminated the room and new readers had joined them. The blinding light slowly faded to reveal three figures. Two men and a woman who were all rather confused as to what was happening. It didn't take long for the light to fade and the shinobi to gasp at the newest readers. It didn't take long to conduct introductions. Hashirama and Tobarama Senju were names that at least Hila knew, and she most definitely knew of Tsunade. Minato and Kashina of course had extremely high opinions of the first two, and the latter of the trio had been close to their son from the young age of twelve on. Not quite to the level of a surrogate mother but close enough that she was family more than simply the fifth Hokage. It was also Tsunade that insisted she get the opportunity to read next. After all, she wanted to know about Naruto's future exploits even more from what little she had been told of by their fellow readers. The gods and shinobi were a bit awkward at handling each other. More so for Hashirama and Tobarama than had been for the others. It wasn't just the idea of meeting supposed gods and goddesses even if they were only gods by the measure of the power of their people compared to humans, but it cut both ways being as both Hashirama and Tobarama had often been referred to as gods of shinobi in their own time. Beyond that though, both men were very intrigued by the idea of Naruto Uzumaki's life. They had great amounts of respect for what they still considered a young man. Having fought beside him in the fourth war they had witnessed his power and beliefs. To see he had become some sort of immortal and married the supposed goddess of death was shocking of course, although, while Tobarama was busy trying to figure out exactly how all of that could happen to someone, Hashirama was simply awestruck by the legendary tale it made. An orphaned hero, secret son of a cage, befriends the biju under his power and works to become the greatest shinobi in history eventually joining the likes of literal gods and marrying the goddess of death herself. He was almost jealous by how fantastical that sounded. He couldn't wait to hear what else was in store for his spiritual successor. Without further hesitation, Tsunade started the chapter. Hum no that's a bit after my time. I've been sealed up for a long time. Who knows though it might have been around if it's really well hidden. If you know where it is though I can get you there. Naruto told Cap. Unsurprising considering being sealed away and all that. Hila said sniping at her father. Ah. Hila let it go, the old man said with a tired groan. The woman scowled. That wouldn't be happening anytime soon. And the dark looks from the other shinobi including the new arrivals meant they weren't likely to move past that little piece of history anytime soon either. I have a way to contact an ally there. If you can drop us off in East Africa we can take care of the rest from there. The blonde closed his eyes as he tried to picture a map of Midgard in his head. East Africa. It's just that giant land mass correct? Mostly dirt? Hum. It might end up being a bit of an issue trying to coordinate their war with this. Thanos if they don't all know the same terms for locations. Tobarama commented. They will figure it out in time. Nothing that they can really do for that anyway. Hashirama shrugged. The short blonde woman of the group was the one who spoke next. It's not all like that but for the most part yes. That's the one. Naruto was about to say something to Thor but stopped when he noticed the bearded man's eye. Or rather the charred remains of what was once his eye. He looked at it before looking back to his wife with a blank look on his face. What is it? The queen asked with an almost unnoticeable smirk. She knew what he was about to ask. Hila blushed ever so faintly knowing what her husband was thinking. What is it with you and trying to gouge people's eyes out? You did that to at least ten people every time we were in a battle. He shook his head in exasperation before focusing on Thor. Thor. Stand still. He commanded. The son of Odin frowned but did as he was told. The group watched in varying degrees of shock as he placed his hand over the injured eye and within seconds it began healing. The damaged skin began regaining its color and once he removed his hand, a perfectly working eye was staring back at him. Sorry, that's been bugging me for a minute now. The blonde commented casually, as if he hadn't just regenerated another person's body part with ease. Clapping his hands he turned back to a still shocked Captain America. 
All right. Wakanda. What's there and how can it help us? Tsunade and Hashirama both became instantly intrigued by the healing abilities that Naruto possessed. The fifth Hokage suddenly had some very interesting thoughts about what could have been possible if she put that sort of ability of his to work back home. Thor simply grinned at the action of his brother-in-law. He was really coming around to this extended family he had. Naruto and Loki might get along more easily than himself but he could definitely see the man as a brother. Breaking out of his stupor the former de facto leader of the Avengers answered. The leader is an ally. He has an entire nation under his command. They have some of the most advanced technology and their army can greatly boost our numbers. If Thanos really has that many people under his command, we'll need every soldier we can get. Naruto nodded. This would definitely help. All right, are the others with you going as well or should I take them back? Cap glanced at the rest, all of whom nodded back at him. They'll come with me. If you don't mind me asking though, what are you gonna do? You should try and recruit powerful allies back on Midgard, Thor pitched in. That's not a bad idea. Naruto admitted. I'll ask Stark if he knows anyone else that could lend us a hand. Lord knows we're gonna need it. He raised his staff, ready to summon a portal when he suddenly stopped and turned to his wife. Why don't you come with me? Oh? This is going to be fun, Kashina said happily. Well any chance for a man to spend time with his beautiful wife? Hashirama chuckled thinking of his time spent with Mito. It is probably also a good idea for their allies to be introduced to the queen of their allied people if they are going to work together against a common enemy. Tobarama pointed out. Yes, yes, you're very clinical aren't you? I'm still going to think of it more as a work date. Hila chuckled, getting grins from Kashina and her own mother as well as Tsunade as she continued to read. Seeing her give him a look he pointed the staff at Thor. He can stay here and keep things under control while you're gone. The people seem to like him and will most likely work better if he's the one who tells them to. Loki will stay here too. And why do I have to come along? She asked. Did you not want to? Loki asked her with his mischievous grin in place. Hela, surely you aren't intending to refuse to spend time with your darling husband? Frigga asked. Hela eyed the woman a bit caught off guard by the teasing. Their interactions were rather rare, but she still couldn't help the small grin that spread on her face as she felt an odd sense of warmth with this sort of playful actions with her family. Oh damn that blonde fool had really mellowed her out. Yes and for that matter why'd I have to stay here as well? Loki added. Really? Several people asked, recalling the general reaction of Midgardians to him. Loki did his best to avoid looking at the stairs sent his way. Because it'll be fun. We've been unsealed and we're about to fight in another war. Might as well enjoy ourselves while we can. He replied to Hela before turning to the god of mischief. As for why you gotta stay here, in case you guys get attacked again it'll be better for Thor to have backup of your caliber than by himself. Hela brightened up a bit at the prospect of battle. That does sound like a lot of fun. Several of the more peace-minded shinobi couldn't help the slight shudder of the feline smile the woman wore. Hela sighed, he was right. As much as she wanted to take her rightful place on the throne they were going to be battling once again soon. Fine, I suppose you're right. Thor, you're in charge of this place while I'm gone. Do try not to damage the place any more than you already have. To which the god of thunder just gave her a blank look. One that the blonde also gave her. Ignoring the two she walked up alongside him. Finally Naruto turned his attention to vision, more specifically he turned his attention to the yellow infinity stone in his forehead. He stared at the stone before beginning to make his way to him. The others, though they knew he was an ally now couldn't help but tense up as he made his way. So this is keeping you alive. Vision nodded that is correct. The mind stone powers me. If what we've been told is true then Thanos will most definitely be targeting me soon. Hum. They will need to find a substitute for him then. Hashirama thoughtfully commented. Tobarama glanced at the apparent queen of Asgard. Maybe. He muttered under his breath. I wouldn't say soon. I have reality in space, you have the mind, and Thanos has the power stone. That only leaves time and soul. My guess is he's gonna go for the soul stone first. Unless he knows where they are, which is doubtful he'll be occupied for a while. Naruto reassured. How do you figure that? Steve asked. If he knew where they were he'd already have them in his gauntlet when he arrived on Asgard. We have some time. When I finish my business on Midgard I'll try and use the reality stone to create an alternative power source for you in order to take the stone. 
sending you into battle with a stone in your head is a bad idea. With his piece said he tapped the staff on the ground willing the dark blue portal to open. That it is, also why the forehead? It's like a big target on his face, Tsunade said. Why is the Byakugo on your forehead instead of anywhere else? Kashina asked her. Tsunade sighed. Kashina do you want an actual full explanation of why the Byakugo has to be on the forehead? How it connects to the chakra network and everything? She asked. Kashina looked thoughtful for a moment but Minato placed a light hand on her mouth before she could answer. Nope. Just continue the chapter if you will Tsunade. He said with the same smile he had perfected for his charming personality that Konoha loved so much back in the day. As if she would understand what I told her anyway. Tsunade huffed as he went back to the story while Kashina narrowed her eyes at the older woman. Captain America and his team walked through after a quick reassurance from Thor, followed by the blonde and the queen. The group reappeared in what seemed to be the wilderness. Contrary to what the blonde thought they were surrounded by bodies of water and grass. Did I get it right? Naruto asked Steve as he looked around. I think you're a little off. The blonde woman, Natasha, said as she pointed to the surface of one of the bodies of water. I see a hippo's head. Well it's probably a whole hippo just that the rest of it is under the water. Steve replied, amused at the looks he got from his friends. A couple of the people with sense of humor chuckled. Others groaned at the childish humor of the hero in blue. You teleported us to the Okavango Delta in Botswana. Natasha continued. But is this Africa? Naruto asked. Well, yes it's Africa just not East Africa. We're a little south. It's fine though I can contact him from here. Cap replied as he went in for a handshake with their new ally. Do you have a way we can communicate with you? The blonde returned the handshake but shook his head. Not really, I just teleport to whoever I need. Kashina rolled her eyes as Minato nodded knowingly. It was so much better to just talk in person than send a message and have to wait for them to receive it and then wait for them to reply. Especially if you then had more to discuss. We'll get something for you to get in touch with us from Wakanda. Sounds good. Just let off a small amount of power from the stone and I'll be able to sense it and come to you should you need me. He replied before turning back to Gila. Come on dear, let's go ask Stark if he has any leads of potential allies. The crew watched as the man and woman disappeared into another portal, leaving them alone in the wilderness. Once they were gone Natasha was the first to speak. Was it just me or was anyone else afraid the queen was going to try and kill us all? What? Gila. Kill you, never. Loki mocked. Oh dear little brother, I can't wait to take a break from reading. You'll be taking a few breaks if you don't watch yourself. Gila commented darkly. Really? That's your threat. No subtlety. No charm. Just blunt. Like our dear brother Thor? Loki teased. Charm and subtlety are reserved for those with some class after all. Hila said simply getting Thor to snort in laughter at the frown Loki now sported. Her stare was somewhat imposing, but I don't believe she means us any harm, at the moment. Vision answered. Cap nodded she definitely has a powerful presence, so does Naruto. The entire room snorted slightly at that. The man had a gift for understatement. I can't believe he's actually married to her. How do they work considering his personality is almost the opposite of hers? She wondered. Her question went unanswered as Steve took out his communication device he had received from the king. Perfectly. Gila replied haughtily, getting a wicked set of grins from her in-laws. Avengers HQ the two deities appeared in the same spot the blonde had taken off from when he sensed the mind stone go off. Naruto noticed the one called Rhodes was missing from the room, leaving only Stark, Bruce, and Peter Parker. He didn't dwell on it for too long though as Stark finally noticed them. He's back. And look he's brought company. Tony announced to Peter. Naruto nodded happily I have. Everyone meet my wife Hela, the Queen of Asgard. Peter began to kneel but was stopped by Tony who lightly smacked him in the back of the head. Come on kid get up. So where are Thor and the others? Oh I do like the boy. Gila happily chirped. He seems so out of place with all of this but I am a bit interested to see what he is capable of. Minato commented. Imagine you and Naruto taking him under your wing. Kashina all but whispered into her daughter in law's ear. Why would we do that? The woman wondered. Think of it like practice or like maybe a prologue. Kashina shamelessly suggested. Odin grimaced. 
The idea of Naruto and Hila guiding a young man with even some basic advice instinctively made him uncomfortable. The idea of grandchildren like Kashina was suggesting was more than he was okay with being discussed. Mercifully Tsunade continued reading. Thor and Loki stayed in Asgard. The other half of your former team is on their way to talk to an ally Captain America is familiar with. Says they can really help us out. So why did you decide to come back here? Bruce asked before realizing who he was talking to and how it sounded. Not that we don't want you back or anything. Loki snorted. It makes you wonder which is the intelligent one, him or the giant green thing. Ah, Loki is still sour about being defeated by Bruce's alter ego, the Hulk. Thor said with a knowing smile. Loki rolled his eyes and scoffed. Although I think it's more because he whipped him around like a toy. Thor laughed, getting a few amused looks directed toward the twitching god of mischief. Waving off his indirect apology he replied Thor said Midgard still has plenty of mighty heroes that could potentially assist us. He figured if anyone knew who we could recruit it would be you. Actually we were just talking about that. There are some people whose help would be invaluable. Bruce told him before looking at Tony to explain. Gila, who'd been amusing herself by staring at Peter until he looked away in discomfort clapped her hand twice. Well? Who are these people you know of? He is adorable. Maybe he would make a nice pet for Naruto, she wondered. Once more Thor found himself trying to figure out if his sister was joking or not. Most of the others were in the same boat, though none were willing to get the answer clarified for them. Tony walked over to another part of the room and began pouring himself a drink. He pulled a device out of his pocket and placed it on the small bar face up. Soon a blue light shot up before an image appeared in midair. The hologram showed the image of an older looking bald man. Two other people appeared next to the man before Tony began speaking. Dr. Charles Xavier. Possesses powerful telepathic powers. He founded an institution dedicated to helping young people with supernatural abilities control their powers. Something to note is that they refer to people with powers as mutants. He explained, taking down the image of the man. Hashirama nodded his head appreciatively toward the man. His clear intent to help guide and train the next generation made for a good first impression on the first Hokage. Next he pointed to the woman. Aurora Munro. One of his most trusted friends and a member of the team he created known as the X-Men. She has the ability to control weather patterns to a frightening degree. Hence her alias, Storm. Like Xavier her picture was also taken down, leaving only one person left. Finally we have Logan. He has, he trailed off trying to think. Well he has a lot of abilities actually. It'd be a bore to go over all of them. He took a sip of his drink and then continued if you can convince Dr. Xavier to help us out we'll have a greater chance of survival considering how many more super-powered people he knows. Formidable powers for the first two, but I wonder what the third is capable of. If he is on the same level as the first two, then all three could be extremely useful allies. Odin nodded. That woman shares a power over lightning with myself. Thor idly commented while focusing slightly on her. Loki shot a look toward his brother for the comment mild amusement and ever-present mischief swirling in his eyes. Naruto rubbed his chin in thought, taking in all the information he'd been given. Where can I find this drive? Westchester County, New York. I'll give you the exact address. It's not too far from here. The genius told him as he began writing down the directions on a piece of paper. Peter who'd tried to stay out of the conversation finally spoke up, do you guys think it's a good idea to go like that? Naruto looked down at himself before looking at Hila and then back to the youth. What do you mean? Well you're in a black suit which is okay I guess. Your wife though, he stopped briefly when Hila narrowed her eyes at him and raised her head, silently warning him that his words better be chosen carefully. She's in full on battle armor, which might attract a bit of attention. Hum. The puppy has a good point. The future me will need to change into something a bit more comfortable, Hila said. Tobarama. I'm not sure about you but did you think that young Naruto would find himself a wife with such character when we met him in the war? Hashirama quietly whispered to his brother. He was even more devoted to the emotionally damaged Uchiha brat than you were to Madara. I imagine finding a woman that mixed his feelings for both of his teammates into a single person was likely to happen eventually. Tobarama replied with a shrug. Sasuke often found himself happy he could read the lips of everyone else in a room. Today was simply not one of those times. Naruto nodded. The kid had a point. Looking around the room he noticed a small magazine next to where he and Loki had been sitting when they showed up. 
Picking it up he flipped through a few pages and put it back down. He tapped his staff on the ground lightly, the reality stone glowing a bright red indicating it's being activated. His clothes began to change into a similar outfit as a man he'd seen on a page. He now wore black jeans, and a dark blue pullover hoodie with a white logo that read, Nike, on it. He didn't know what a, Nike, was but it looked alright. Similar to him Hela's clothes had also changed from her black and green battle armor into skin-tight black jeans with a dark green zip-up hoodie that she filled in quite nicely. Oh, stylish and relaxed. You both look good. Kashina chirped happily. It's not exactly royal clothing, but it has promise. Hela said happily glancing at her own image before happily taking in the appearance of her love. There we go, Naruto said happy with his work. He walked over to Tony and grabbed the piece of paper with the address on it. We'll be back once we have them on board. With that the two disappeared into the void the space stone created. Uh, I don't think Naruto knows how to tell directions on Earth. So where exactly did he just teleport them to? Bruce asked, concern lacing into his voice. Both he and Peter turned to Tony who just stared back at them and shrugged. I'm sure they'll be fine. All they have to do is find Dr. Xavier, explain the situation and job done. Trust me, they can't mess this up. Both Bruce and Peter glanced at each other and their faces showed the same expression. Doubt. Hela sighed slightly though as was a near constant since this reading had begun she sported a small amused grin. XXXXXXXXXXX do you know where we are? Hila asked a little louder than normal. It can't be too far from here and it's a mansion. There's probably people flying around it and whatnot. We'll find it easily. For now let's just enjoy the sights. He replied just as loud. Why were they speaking with louder than normal voices? It has something to do with where they appeared when they stepped out of the portal. Work date indeed. Frigga giggled. Where did they appear? On the freeway. Luckily it was one of those times where it was relatively empty, at least on their side. The other side had cars blasting through it creating a lot of noise. Just as he uttered the words, enjoy the sights he noticed something in his peripheral vision coming at them. A metal box coming at them at relatively fast speeds. Before he could act however, the object seemed to lose control and hit the side of the freeway and began swerving left to right before ultimately flipping over. The married couple looked up just as it was flipping over them. They both blinked in confusion when a man stuck his head out of the top. He had a red mask with black accents around the eyes and white pupil less spots where the eyes would go and no mouth. He really is somehow the luckiest and unluckiest person in existence, Sakura said in exasperation. Can't even walk without starting something, Sasuke simply said, his tone clear that he had come to accept such a thing about his friend a long time ago. The masked man looked down at them and tilted his head in what appeared to be confusion or curiosity. Oh. Hello he said before going back inside. They watched as it crashed nearby and the masked man was the only one to step out. Well I think we're on the right track. Hila said as she took in the rest of the mon's appearance. Naruto was going to reply but stopped as his senses told him something was coming. Turning around he saw another one making its way at them. Activating his magnet release he raised an arm and waved his hand up and down. If he could see the people inside he was sure they'd have a look of fear as they levitated before crashing back down. Unlike the other vehicle six goons ran out of the car with what he would guess were weapons drawn and pointed at them. Before they even had a chance to attack however three of them were stabbed in the throat by small knives courtesy of Hila. The remaining three watched in shock as their cohorts were dropped without trouble. Shaking out of it they began firing only to have their eyes widen as their bullets stopped in mid-air before dropping uselessly on the ground. You two really are just unfair. Loki said with most of the room nodding. They weren't given the chance to attack again however as a red blur flew over them, landing behind the soon-to-be-dead goons. The masked man made quick work decapitating one while simultaneously stabbing another in the stomach. Pulling the blade out he flung it with impressive accuracy in between the last man's eyes. The man in black and red wiped the blood off of his blade on the shirt of the now deceased man and made his way over to the pair. Hey there. You guys are new I don't think you're supposed to be in this movie are you? He asked. Well, he's certainly an interesting character. Hila said awkwardly a bit confused by his words. I don't really know why but I feel like I am going to get a headache soon. Tobarama said with a confused voice. You'll get used to it. Odin replied blandly. The blonde walked up. Hey. I am Naruto and this is Hila. As for your question I'm not really sure what you're talking about. 
Anyways you wouldn't happen to know where I can find Charles Xavier do you? McAvoy or Stewart? These timelines get really confusing. Naruto glanced at Hila who shrugged. Uh Stewart. You know where he is? It turned out to be the right answer as the man nodded. Yeah I know where to find him. He's over at that giant mansion of his. I was worried he sent you guys to try and get me to join his little team. I keep telling that giant if I ever decide to become a crime fighting shit swizzler who rooms with a bunch of other little whiners at Neverland Mansion with some creepy, old, bald, heaven's gate looking mother sensor aider I'll send them a friend request. The man ranted. Oh you can call me Ryan, I mean Deadpool. Interesting is the least of what this one is, Minato said. Of course he somehow runs into a rambling assassin of some kind that knows where it is he is trying to go to, Sakura said in exasperation. Naruto was about to nod at the introduction when he sensed something was a bit, off with the man. Are you injured? Deadpool nodded. Yup I'm all sorts of censored it up underneath this costume. To prove his point he removed his mask which revealed to them the badly burned face of the man. Yeah I got censored it up by some assholes, I got healing abilities but can't heal from this. Censored it up right? Actually, Naruto might be able to. Hila said while lightly scratching her cheek unknowingly copying a mannerism her husband often used. Tsunade snorted slightly as she continued reading. Naruto nodded, taking in the appearance. Hold still. Deadpool didn't get to ask why as Naruto put his palm on the man's forehead and all became clear. The burned skin began changing, smoothing out to match everyone else's. The man's hair began growing back instantly, which in Hela's opinion was rather disgusting to see. Within 10 seconds the man looked like he had a while back. Wow, that was a huge transformation. Kakashi said, causing a couple others to glance his way having forgotten he was there as well due to his silence. Naruto walked over to the wreckage and picked up a piece of the broken mirror from the vehicle and threw it to Deadpool who caught it easily. After taking a moment to observe himself he turned back to the blonde and said the only thing on his mind. You're censoring Jesus aren't you? Who? Many in the room wondered. Sort of deity and miracle worker in one of the primary Midgardian religions. He was actually a really fun person to sit and talk with. He could even make water into wine. Loki commented. Tsunade was very intrigued at that thought. As they were given a small break she collared the dark-haired god to tell him more of this booze fountain man. Once the readers had reconvened Hashirama found himself to be the next to be reading. He was a bit more excited than most had expected, but for him Naruto was something of a successor or distant grandchild in a very convoluted sort of way. His adventures were already incredibly entertaining and Hashirama wanted to know so much more. Thank you. Thank you. I understand all of you wish to be saved but we really must get going. Deadpool apologized while holding stacks of money that had been handed to him. The man put his hand on Naruto's back and lightly pushed him in a different direction and by extension Hila as well. Here's your cut by the way. The red costumed man told him, handing him a large stack of green bills. Naruto held the paper up to eye level and took in every detail of what he figured was their currency. Seeing as all of them were basically the same he folded them in half and stuffed them into one of his pockets. Well that can't be a good sign. Minato sighed. It's just money. What could be wrong with that? Kakashi asked before wincing at the realization of what he had just said. This pattern had repeated several times over the past half hour now. The man would tell people if they'd heard about their lord and savior Jesus Christ. Deadpool would then ask Naruto to do something trivial like changing one substance to another which usually resulted with crowds of people crying hysterically. Why do you continue to use the reality stone to turn water into alcohol? Hila asked. The people will cry every time and then crowd around us like animals. She said with distaste. Besides, it only seems to egg him on more. He manipulated my son into posing as a religious icon? Kashina asked blankly. I mean he is the new god of shinobi, Tsunade weakly commented. The two were following closely behind him as he led them down the streets of the city, only half paying attention to whatever he was rambling on about at the moment. Naruto wasn't too interested in whatever this timeline he kept going on about was. No he was more curious as to how Deadpool came to be. From what he picked up from the man's stories there were people who were born with supernatural abilities. That wasn't too big of a surprise, he was from a place where people could bend the elements to their wills, distort reality to a degree, and resurrect the dead. What was surprising was that not everyone was viewed the same way because of it. The people here were referred to as mutants, 
a subclass of humans that even had slightly different DNA. In their DNA they had what was known as a mutant gene that granted them a supernatural ability. It seemed that Deadpool had been injected with a serum that was supposed to activate a dormant mutant gene, and it worked. A little too well. This is interesting, but shouldn't he be focusing on getting aid for Thanos' eventual arrival? Tobarama asked. It doesn't hurt to know more about your prospective allies and understand their desires and issues. It would only help you in the long run. Hila commented, getting begrudging agreement from all of the more tactically minded readers in the group. He suffered from a form of cancer and his newfound healing factor made both his normal cells and cancer cells unable to die which resulted in his former appearance. Luckily for the man, it wasn't anything he couldn't fix. And even now they continue to bug me to join. Mostly the big guy but they all fall under the same umbrella. Deadpool finished his latest story. Both Naruto and Hila glanced over to the man who, despite being healed, still wore the mask over his head. Maybe it was a hidden identity type thing. Hela's annoyed look returned in full force which didn't seem to phase the man at all. He loves hearing himself speak doesn't he? It's clear he's not all that there. I already don't like him, but he seems useful enough, Hela said. Just need a way to better control him, perhaps? Loki pondered. Yes, perhaps some way to make him do my bidding, as well as shut him up, she agreed. Seriously, in the small time that they'd been together, he hadn't stopped talking. It was tolerable the first minute they met, but the moment Naruto used what Deadpool had dubbed a Jesus miracle, he'd pestered them to no end. He inquired about their other abilities like a child who just discovered something new. Can you walk on water? Can you turn water into wine? Etc. Etc. It didn't help that the answers to most of his questions were yes. Without unwrapping her arm from his, she spoke again. You just had to humor him, didn't you? He kind of likes being the center of attention, Sasuke pointed out. Oh, I know that. He deserves it too, not everyone needs to be humored though, the goddess of death replied. Naruto chuckled. He knew his wife was quick to annoy, having been on the receiving side of her snarky comments and attitude multiple times over the years. I like him, he's funny. Having been sealed away for so long it's a breath of fresh air. The closest thing I've had to amuse me since we were freed is your brother Loki. He said, referring to them messing with Thor when they went to speak to Tony Stark. Hela raised an eyebrow at his statement. So you're saying our time together after being freed wasn't to your liking? Aha, uh -huh, that's bait. Hashirama commented recalling when Mito would pull the same thing with him. That was pleasurable. I hadn't been able to make love to my wife in a long time so believe me, I loved every minute of it. I mean it more in the sense of being amused by something. And he maneuvered like a champ, Minato proudly stated. I know what you meant. I can see how the two of you would get along. She responded with a rare smile as she stared up at him for a moment. Not at the thought of Loki mind you, no his way of speaking reminded her a bit too much of Odin for her liking. The thoughts of their time together on Asgard before everything went down entered her mind. Ah. Uh, really I remind you of him, sister? Loki asked, clearly offended, which offended Odin in turn. Unfortunately so, though I like you considerably more than him, so there is that, she said. From the moment she met him he was always looking for ways to amuse himself, whether it be hijinks with the others or making remarks that only he found funny. Even she found herself amused at times before battles when he would say something completely nonchalantly in a tense room. She'd never admit it out loud but she knew that even if he weren't as powerful as he is, she'd have still allowed him to get close and most likely married him. Her improving mood was ruined when she noticed the masked man staring at her. Even though the mask had no mouth, she could just tell he was smiling like an idiot under that mask. Great, he'd caught her making eyes at her husband. You would? Odin and Loki both asked before sharply turning to stare at one another. Oh you two are just meant for each other. Kashina practically squealed in delight. Hela, despite everything and literal centuries of practice had the faintest of blushes spread across her cheeks as well as the tiniest of smiles. Insect. She called out, referring to Deadpool. How much longer until we arrive? We're just a few minutes away. Don't worry, you won't miss him. He's probably expecting you anyway. Deadpool replied. How do you figure that? Naruto asked curiously. He is a powerful telepath, perhaps he witnessed the extortion of the commoners along their path. Tobarama blandly stated. Hila pinched the bridge of her nose ever so slightly. The man shrugged and continued his strides. He seems to know a lot. 
I'd say it's a safe bet to say that Colossus told him though. He's one of the X-Men I was telling you about. Damn. Should have probably paid more attention to his ramblings. Sorry but who's Colossus? He asked. Deadpool waved a hand in a dismissive manner at the question. He's a member of the X-Men, the group that Charles Xavier created. You'll meet him soon. Fortunately, at least for Gila, the rest of the trip to their destination was quiet for the most part. The man had finally ceased his random stories and was finally being useful. After a few more minutes of silence, they finally stepped foot onto a large property. They walked down a large driveway that led to a beautiful fountain directly in front of the doors to the entrance. We're here. Talk about over the top right, Deadpool said, looking at the large home that doubled as a school. Compared to Asgard, meh. Loki commented. Naruto and Hila weren't as impressed. Compared to Asgard where things were literally lined in gold, this was actually underwhelming. Their own home that they'd been gifted by Odin after their marriage was almost like a palace. Golden fountains, precious metals lining the walls and floor, and more space than they'd ever occupy. Still, for a human home it wasn't too bad they supposed. Just a heads up I won't be joining you from here. I have a couple, things I need to take care of. Deadpool informed them. No matter. Hila responded quickly. Naruto gave her a brief look that she knew to mean, behave. The woman rolled her eyes but complied and didn't say anything after that. Several of the readers chuckled, none more than Naruto's parents. Hila found it a little less amusing than the rest though she did like it when he acted all head of the household like that. Take care of your business. Thank you for bringing us here. Naruto thanked the man. Deadpool gave a salute and quickly turned around preparing to leave. I'm sure I'll be seeing you guys again real soon, you wouldn't be here otherwise. Naruto nodded once again and watched the man depart. Looking over to his wife he motioned her to follow him and walked up to the door. Knocking twice the two didn't have to wait long before the sound of steps could be heard getting closer and closer. When the door opened they were greeted by the woman Tony Stark had informed him was Aurora Munro. She is an abnormally attractive woman. Tobarama commented upon seeing the white-haired beauty. Hashirama sent a smirk toward his younger brother. This storm as they had previously learned she was nicknamed was a stunning woman and from the sound of it powerful too. Hello, is there something you need? She asked politely. Though she tried to be discreet, neither Naruto or Hila missed the way her eyes gave them a once over, almost as if discerning whether they were a threat or not. Hello Ms. Munro. Naruto greeted with a subtle nod of his head. My name is Naruto Uzumaki and this is Hila Odin's daughter Uzumaki. We have some important news we'd like to discuss with Dr. Xavier. Is he around by chance? Naruto asked. Odin's daughter? As in the daughter of Norse god Odin? Aurora. Well she caught on quick, Sasuke said in surprise. Hila rolled her eyes. Yes, it's Uzumaki now but I suppose you mortals can refer to me as Odin's daughter. Their conversation was interrupted by a third voice that came from behind the woman. Opening the door slightly wider so that the man could be seen, Naruto smiled having found exactly who he was looking for. Good afternoon. The bald man on the wheelchair greeted them as he rolled up to the door. Dr. Charles Xavier, owner of this institution. To what do I owe the pleasure of having a Norse goddess and her husband visit? He asked. The man must have seen some things in his life if the presence of two gods didn't faze him. He isn't exactly what I expected but I guess I don't know what I was expecting. Thor said simply. He has a certain aura about him. Despite being trapped in that wheelchair he is incredibly powerful and not just because of his abilities. I suspect he is a very intelligent man. Hila said as she stared at the image of the man before them. All that from just this meeting? Sakura asked. She's right. Tobarama silenced the pinket. This man was not powerful in a traditional sense perhaps but he was clearly someone with very great weight behind his words. Aurora looked from the pair to Charles with a confused look on her face. Oh, I thought you were busy today? The bald man shook his head no no, I believe they are the ones Peter told me about earlier today. They were seen stepping out of a portal and later on with Mr. Wilson, partook in some interesting activities from what I've been told. People have claimed Jesus has returned, he said with a chuckle. Gila rolled her eyes and shook her head, she knew humoring that man would be a bad idea. Hila was once again pinching at the bridge of her nose. Naruto meanwhile joined Partook in the laughter. It's strange that a majority of the people seemingly know about super-powered individuals, 
but doing some very minor actions had them losing their minds. The bald man nodded in agreement and used his hands to change the direction he was facing. Why don't we speak in my office? It's more comfortable there. Aurora, would you like to join us? Having known the man as long as she did knew he was asking her to be there. She nodded and tagged along quietly, listening intently as Charles and Naruto held conversation about the school and the interior design. As they made their way down the halls, they caught the attention of a group of students that happened to be walking in the opposite direction. There were three of them and they couldn't help but glance at the two newcomers. Students? Naruto asked. Hashirama and Minato were especially interested in this section. Both had been dedicated to the next generation. Likewise Tobarama was intrigued by the idea of the students of this Professor Xavier. The wheelchair-bound man nodded. Correct. Seeing as we have their attention I'll introduce them. The first was a man wearing all black with some red-tinted glasses, he was relatively tall but not very imposing. The next was a woman with brown and white hair, she was just a bit shorter than Hila but had a great figure. Her demeanor wasn't as confident as the man next to her and she seemed almost, sad. Naruto noticed how she did her best to stay far enough away that her hand wouldn't even brush up against anyone's. Usually it happened by mistake but for her to consciously be avoiding it, something wasn't right. Hum that is interesting. I wonder if it has to do with her abilities. Those mutant genes or whatever. Tsunade hummed in thought. Next to her was another woman, this one slightly taller than the last with red hair and an equally great figure. She stood tall and exuded confidence the way the man did. She was staring at the two of them with curiosity in her eyes but also a mix of suspicion. Scott, Anna, Jean. I'd like you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Uzumaki, Charles said. A definite improvement over Odin's daughter, Kashina commented. Agreed. Hila said. Naruto walked forward and took Scott's hand. The man shook his hand and looked him in the eyes and nodded. A pleasure Scott said to which he replied, likewise. Jean moved over and went next, something that again didn't go unnoticed by either of the two. When they finally got to Anna, Naruto knew he was right on the money, she didn't extend her hand. You're afraid of physical contact, Naruto stated, shocking the others except Hila. If I had to take a guess I'd say it has something to do with this, mutant gene, you were probably born with. You don't have to worry, I promise no matter what you do nothing will happen to me, he added. There he goes trying to solve every little damsel's troubles, Hila sneered. Please as if my boy would pass up on you, his wife for some little girl he barely knows. Kashina reprimanded her. Hila blinked for a moment before slowly nodding. She trusted her husband after all the only person in all the universe that she did. Charles Xavier thought back to what he'd been told by Colossus and wondered how it could be that he wasn't a mutant. Had the man been lied to? No, that wasn't like Peter. He said they appeared from a portal meaning they must have some sort of power. Xavier wasn't the only one mentally trying to figure things out. Jean Grey was now staring at the blonde with suspicion clear on her face. The man didn't know what he was in for. He was promising that he'd be okay even though he didn't know the first thing about Rogue's powers. Without a second thought, she activated her own powers and attempted to read the man's mind. Foolish. Tobarama commented. She is definitely in for a rude awakening. Sasuke agreed. He'd been in Naruto's head. That was a mistake she'd soon regret. Her vision went black and she soon found herself in a completely different room. The young woman took in her surroundings trying to find out where she'd been teleported to. Was this the blonde man's doing? If so, how had he attacked before anyone realized it? To add to the danger she was feeling, her powers didn't seem to be working either. Just what the hell had he done? Nothing as far as I can tell. That's just his mindscape, Sasuke shrugged. Now on high alert in case of an attack, she realized that she was actually in a flooded room of some sort. The water went up to her ankles and she mentally patted herself on the back for wearing boots today. Seeing that there was only one way to go and that there was a speck of light further ahead, she trekked forward. The sound of the water being displaced with each step only served to make her more uneasy. She was confident in her abilities but here, wherever here was, they weren't working. When she finally made it to the end of the tunnel, she was in, her eyes narrowed in suspicion at what she was seeing. There was no wall that indicated a dead end, instead it was nothing but black. The light seemingly being absorbed completely, not letting anything bounce back for her to see. Something's wrong, she thought to herself. She could feel her heart accelerating and her blood pumping faster. Is that just dawning on her now? 
Loki asked. These mortals are rather arrogant. Hela agreed. She was already a bit tense from the short interest her husband had in the skunk-haired girl. Now this one dared invade his mind. They were very lucky it was Naruto they were dealing with and not herself. She would have crushed them like the bugs they were. Her instincts were yelling, pleading with her to turn around and run but she found herself unable to move. Sweat rolled down her temple and she felt like she'd pass out the moment two large animalistic arms emerged from the darkness. The arms were soon followed by the large face of a snarling fox. The fox's teeth alone were as large as she was and its red eyes were glowing, staring dangerously at her. Karama. Finally awake I see. The fox's attention was drawn behind her and as much as she wanted to turn around, her body would not let her. Even though she was petrified at the moment she was still able to discern that the voice belonged to the blonde who'd mind she tried to read. And Uzumaki just ignores the intruder like nothing. She is no threat to him at all as she. Tobarama realized. He is a literal god slayer. What could she hope to do to him if he did wish harm upon her? Kakashi asked. He had nothing but pride for Naruto. And also happiness that out of his students it was the really nice one that became some kind of godlike being. Naruto. Who is this woman? Kurama asked, turning his attention back to Jean. The snarl was gone, not that it made it any better, and now it looked at her with a look she knew meant he wanted answers. This would be Jean Grey. Naruto said as he walked past her. Jean was further shocked when the blonde walked up the large fox, jumped, and hugged it at the snout. She wasn't sure if her mind was playing tricks on her but she was sure she saw the fox's face soften up for a moment before getting serious again. I won't be getting used to that. Kashina grimaced. It's cute though. Hila chimed in. She almost wanted the giant fox as little more than a pet but she supposed that might bother Naruto somehow. Kurama exhaled strongly through his nose and used one hand to gently grab Naruto by his shirt and pry him off before placing him back on the ground. Is this woman a friend of yours? He asked. Not exactly. Just met her, but it seems she was curious enough about something that she decided to take a peek inside. Not the best idea. He told her almost as if he were scolding a child. He is scolding an insolent little child, Hila agreed. The other gave her off looks. It seemed Hela was even more protective of her husband than she let on. Come to think of it, if she's here, then that means we're free right? I just woke up from that forced slumber Odin put us through, he explained. Naruto smiled at his oldest friend and nodded. We are. He's dead. Where have you been? Naruto asked. You weren't here when I tried to check on you after we were sealed. Kurama placed its clawed hands in front of himself and laid down to be more comfortable before speaking. I've been here all along. When we were sealed there was some form of barrier between us. I could see you but couldn't hear you. You couldn't see or hear me. Shortly after that I was put to sleep, I only now regained enough power to wake up. Thanks in part to the woman here. Her invasion was the last little kick I needed. Hum well I suppose even insects have uses, Hela sniped. Wow, have you been this petty and jealous the entire time? Loki asked. Please I'm the censored in queen of petty, she replied. Yeah that tracks. Thor agreed. Naruto hummed to himself. It wasn't too surprising. Odin was powerful so he must have had a way to even seal Kurama away. Well, it's good to have you back Kurama. You have no idea the situation that we're in right now. Do tell Kurama ordered with intrigue. I'll fill you in later. For now, Naruto trailed off, turning to the red-headed woman. Want to tell me what you're doing here? Though it sounded like a question, the woman knew it wasn't. Swallowing the lump she felt in her throat, Jean spoke. You claimed not to be a mutant and wanted to touch Anna. I had to make sure you weren't up to anything. Excuses for a nosy brat. Tobarama scoffed. I think she truly wanted to protect her friend though. Minato chimed in. Trying to protect one of your friends. I can respect that. Naruto complimented. You should be more careful about whose minds you invade though, you never know what they have in there. As you found out. He added, pointing towards the large fox. You don't need to worry though. Trust me when I say nothing will happen to me or her. Jean didn't get a chance to question him further as his hand placed itself on her head and pushed. Inhaling deeply, Jean found herself back in the mansion. Glancing around she noticed everyone was still in the same place they'd been when she'd left. It was almost as if no time had passed at all. I think you can take his word, Anna, Charles commented. I like the old man much better. 
He could have tried the same stunt but was far more polite, Kashina commented. The woman looked to the bald man and got a look of reassurance, then hesitantly placed her hand in his. She clenched her teeth, ready for the influx of information to rush her, only for none of that to happen. Their hands clasped and Naruto looked at the woman with a knowing smile. See? That wasn't so bad was it? Naruto asked. The woman looked up at him with an amazed look and placed her other hand atop his. She slowly rubbed the back of his hand with hers, seemingly in a trance. Hila looked at their hands and back to the woman. Just as she took a step forward the tension was cleared by Aurora who coughed into her fist. The readers at large snickered at the flowering goddess but no one bothered teasing her. At least not right now. Well, now that introductions are over we can continue, don't you agree Charles? She asked. Naruto removed his hand, only slightly uncomfortable by the caressing his hand had been given and took a step back. Of course. If you two would follow me. Wait. Can we talk later? The woman with the brown and white colored hair asked loudly as they were walking away. Unfortunately for her, the blonde didn't get a chance to respond as his wife beat him to the punch. Hila looped her arm around his and gave her a cold stare. We won't be here long. Oh Hila, that poor girl looks so lonely. Having Naruto offer her some comfort won't mean they will run off together. Frigga scolded. Hila simply ignored the woman and crossed her arms in a quiet show of contempt. You don't say something like that in front of his wife. They heard Scott say in a hushed tone. Hila huffed and pushed the thoughts of the woman from her mind. They had bigger matters to attend to. At least one of them has some decorum, she sniffed. He also seems about as interesting as a wooden plank. Kashina boredly commented, waving for Hashirama to read faster. Reaching the office, the two were allowed in and told to sit across from the man. Aurora took her place next to the elder man and stood up straighter. So tell me, what can I do for you? he asked politely. The married couple glanced at each other, having a brief conversation with just a look. Hila crossed one leg over the other and rested her hand on a fist, content with letting Naruto do the talking. Tell me Mr. Xavier. Have you ever heard of the Infinity Stones? The next hour was spent with them being caught up to speed on the current happenings of the world. The Infinity Stones, Thanos' plan, and the destruction that would soon happen if he were to collect all six. Charles and Aurora looked deeply worried by what they'd just heard. Aurora mostly thought about the students while Charles was more focused on the world repercussions it could have. Thankfully they are both taking it so seriously, Minato commented. This is a dire situation. You said Thanos already possesses one of the stones? The bald man asked. Naruto nodded. So there are five left to be found. That gives us time to prepare. I have no doubt that despite our differences in views even he would agree that this is worth uniting for. Aurora looked slightly shocked at his words. You're planning to ask Eric for help? She asked. What if he goes looking for the stones himself? Hum. Midgard seems to have far too many factions vying for power, Odin stated. Is that really all that different from anywhere else? Minato asked. Asgard is he began. Mostly in ruins and ruled by me now. There are always opposing factions vying for power. Midgard is a relatively large and heavily populated place so it makes sense that there would be so many different groups there. Hila interrupted getting her father to glower down at her. Not that she actually cared at all. Won't do him much good. Without a suitable medium to channel the power through they're useless. Also, there's only two stones we need to worry about at the moment. Naruto said as he stood up. Extending an arm he revealed his staff and the two X-Men's eyes were drawn to the glowing blue and red stones embedded near the top. We already have the space and reality stone. I know where the mind stone is and Thanos has the power stone. All that's left unaccounted for is the time stone and the soul stone. Hela continued. Thanos already sent minions to try to collect the mind stone and failed. Our guess is he's heading for the soul stone first before making a move again. Before I can get another stone however, I'm going to need a new staff. This one is powerful, but it won't be able to withstand more than the two stones it has already. I'll need to deal with that first. Naruto finished. That would be an issue. Hila huffed. Just more and more tasks that must be completed before this Thanos arrives to make his war. Tobarama frowned. I see. Charles muttered to himself. I will see what I can do about gathering some powerful allies. I'll make a few calls tonight. If you would excuse me you've given me a lot to think about. He is bringing even more allies to the table. Excellent. 
In no time at all I'm sure there will be a force capable of bringing Thanos down for good assembled. Hashirama happily commented. If it is up to Naruto, there isn't any doubt in my mind. Sakura agreed with the rest of the shinobi and Hila, Frigga and even begrudgingly Odin nodding along. The three occupants in the room watched the man roll his way out of the room with a pensive look on his face. Naruto waited until the door was closed to speak up once more. I think he took that rather well. Hila shook her head. Possibly. Better than I thought he would. Now that our work here is done however, we should go. Naruto agreed and tapped the staff on the ground forcing the space stone to generate a blue and black portal just behind their chairs. Do tell the young lady that we won't be able to talk today. Naruto said to Aurora before stepping in. Hila did no such thing and walked through without so much as a look back. Wow you really feel threatened by her. Kashina said in surprise. PFF'd hardly. Hila replied. Aurora let out a breath and sat down. How had today gone from team training problems to potential end of the world problems? XXXXXXXXXXX Sanctum Sanctorum is something the matter? Someone asked. Yes. Odin's daughter and son in law are on Earth at the moment, another man said. I know what you're thinking. Don't confront them just yet. Let's see what's going on first. In the meantime, I have a few things to do. An orange circle appeared in thin air, showing snowy mountaintops, and the man stepped through. Once the portal closed the remaining man let a small smile appear on his face. All right, let's see what they're here for. That could prove to be an issue soon, Hashirama said worriedly. I'm certain Naruto can handle it. Now give me the book brother, there is no reason to wait for the next chapter. All I'm saying is that maybe they're not that bad. Peter reasoned. Over the past couple of minutes, Banner had watched as Tony and Peter bantered back and forth about their new allies. Tony wouldn't consider them real allies just yet as in his opinion, anyone who would willingly work with Loki couldn't be that much better. I knew the boy was my favorite among them, Hila commented as she interrupted Tobarama's reading. You look at him like he is a puppy for sale, Tsunade said. Isn't he? She replied coolly. Their eyes traveled across the room as a dark blue portal appeared and the two deities in question stepped out. The blonde's hand holding the staff extended and accidentally hit an expensive looking decoration piece Tony had set on a small table. Everyone's eyes followed the piece as it fell off the table and shattered with ease. Whoops. Some of the audience snorted. No doubt that piece was likely expensive. Pieces slid on the floor in every direction and Tony turned to Peter giving him a look. It was an accident, it could have happened to anyone. Peter defended, though he wished they hadn't done that as he was trying to make a case for them. Poor boy has his work cut out for him trying to win you two support, Odin commented. Hum ten minutes with Naruto and something to drink and they will all be on your side, Sasuke told the woman. Oh he's gotten better. It's more like a handshake and a smile and everyone wants to be his friend. It's honestly a bit annoying, Hila replied. How do you two even work? Thor asked in confusion. We've been over this before. My darling husband and I work perfectly, Hila said with a scoff. Ignoring the teenager for the time being, the man spoke. Well? How'd it go? Naruto smiled proudly and nodded. Everything went well. We told him what was going down and he seemed pretty concerned. As he should be. Banner commented. He's going to be making some calls but it's safe to assume we got his support. He finished. So what do we do now? Banner asked. It's gonna take some time for Dr. Xavier to gather people and we still don't know what to do about the Mind Stone. We can't just rip it out of vision, that's what keeps him alive. Tony nodded and rubbed his chin in thought. That's true. Speaking of time, that stone is out there somewhere too and we have no leads to follow. As far as I can remember we haven't come across any threat that was using it. More allies is good but between needing a new staff and attaining the remaining stones they are still in the same place they were. Tobarama pointed out. Have faith in Naruto brother, he is our eventual successor, Hashirama said. Like grandfather said uncle, you can put your faith in Naruto, Tsunade agreed. I know that, I was just making a comment, Tobarama grumbled. You don't think Thanos knows where it is, do you? Bruce asked in mild concern. The thought of the purple giant getting his hand on another stone filled him with dread. He'd already seen what the blonde could do with two, and even though he was on their side, it put him on edge. If Thanos got the rest it would be catastrophic. Fortunately for him. 
His worries were put to rest by Naruto who was shaking his head. Doubt it. He had the power stone when we fought. If he knew where the time stone was I think he would have had it already. What about the other stone? You said there was also the soul stone right? Peter asked. There's a chance he knows where that one is, or at least has an idea. Hila pitched in. He wouldn't have made the decision to retreat if he wasn't certain he could get more firepower. The readers collectively grimaced at that reality. Naruto stared at the staff in his hand and felt the power flowing through it. All this talk of the stones had brought up a concern in his mind. Hela's weapons were powerful, she was the goddess of death after all, but even now he could tell the staff was barely able to use the might of two stones. Hum well that is impressive. The stones are even more frightening than I had imagined they were, Hela said. Trying to add a third would certainly cause it to shatter. He would need to head to Nidavellir some time soon to get a real staff constructed. A distant memory from the Fourth Great Ninja War made its way to his mind, specifically, one of their adversaries at the time. He nodded mentally, he knew just how the new staff would look. This caused the other veterans of that conflict to hum in thought at what he was considering for the tool. Noticing that everyone was looking at him, he nodded and hoped they had asked a yes or no question. If the rolling of her eyes was any indication, he would take a guess that it wasn't. Well nice to know some things never change I suppose, Kakashi chuckled. They're wondering what you think about whether or not Thanos has more stones by now and if you can handle it. Chances are he'll at least have the soul stone the next time we meet. I'm certain that even with two stones I should be able to overpower him. I can feel my strength slowly returning to me so the longer we can avoid the confrontation, the stronger I'll be. Anyway, he said, trying to get back to the other stone. That's good. The longer thanks takes, the more the odds will be stacked against him, Loki happily remarked. The issue with vision is simply taking the stone out. Using the reality stone I can create another source of power to keep him alive. It'll be up to you guys to equip him with it however. Naruto finished. Peter frowned in confusion and took a look around the room. Two of the smartest men in the world were right next to each other but no one had suggested the obvious solution. Uh excuse me. Everyone looked at the young man who slightly shrunk under their gaze. Why not just give Vision a body? He said. What a good boy. Hila happily tittered. She really is considering him a puppy. Kashina grimaced a bit. More at the fact her over-imaginative mind could picture a very confusing image of Naruto and Hila with a cozy house and the boy curled up at the foot of the bed. You cannot take a person for a pet. Minato said with a mild humorous tone though a bit of real intent on it as well. Hila just smiled on ignoring the others entirely as far as they could tell. The room went silent and those around began looking back at each other. What do you mean by that? Naruto asked well, the reality stone can literally warp reality right? Naruto nodded. Then why don't you just reality warp vision a new body? It should be easy enough for you right? In theory that's all it should take. All jokes aside, if that works then it is an excellent solution. He is a bright child. Tobarama praised him. The blonde scratched the side of his head and thought about it. As of now all he'd been doing was using a little bit of energy to cause the stone to work. If anything it acted as an overpowered genjutsu but if he actually forced more power. He tapped the staff on the ground, letting the stone glow a deep red. In his hand a small red can materialized, complete with liquid inside. The stone was still glowing so the can was still with him. Imposing his will, he cut power to the stone and smiled widely at the sight of the can still in place. Hila raised an impressed eyebrow at the display and felt immense pride in her dearest. Part of her wondered if she would have the power to control a stone to that degree. Use one, of course, but more than one with that kind of control. That was iffy. Wait. Are you acknowledging him as more powerful than you? Odin asked in surprise. Hila didn't bother to answer. Her feelings on the matter were made clear by the book after all. She turned her attention to the young man who had made the suggestion and put a hand on his shoulder and squeezed lightly to show her approval of his idea. Her lips quivered upward in a mischievous smile at the feeling of him tensing upon contact. Please don't kill me she heard him whisper repeatedly. Simply adorable. Hila cooed. Naruto tried not to show how amusing he found the boy and decided to save him from the position he found himself in. I hadn't thought of that actually. Next time I see him I can just change his body's composition to make it organic. He has become at least on par with the Sage of Six Paths if not fully surpassed him. Hashirama commented in awe. 
Our baby is pretty much God, Monado. Kashina sniffled in pride. Hey, yeah he is. Monado grinned in an uncharacteristic show of pride and censoredness. And the stone? Tony asked. He was slightly concerned at the power the stones had, to be able to just turn something inorganic into a living being with a thought, it just wasn't natural. He eyed the blonde as well, he didn't know him but Thor trusted him and he trusted Thor. Loki, not so much but even if the god of mischief decided to go rogue, with the power at their disposal, handling him would be easier this time around. Thinking of the god reminded him of their last encounter and he grinned. The image of the Hulk grabbing the man by the leg and smashing him into the ground repeatedly always put him in a good mood. Loki shrank down a bit and frowned at the series of half grins sent his way. Even though they had seemingly solved one problem, Banner still had an apprehensive look on his face. A look which Tony recognized and asked what was wrong. Well I still see one pretty big problem. Banner started. If his body is just changed to be organic, he would be a grown man but is really only two years old. Vision has no birth certificate or records of any kind. Not only that but he's a machine, he won't be used to the bodily functions a human has like needing to eat or breathe. Oh, yeah that is gonna censored, Sakura agreed. Surely Naruto has some kind of solution, Thor replied. All eyes turned back to Naruto. He glanced at everyone and shrugged. Yeah that's going to be on him. All I can do is provide the means to keep him alive and then take care of the stone. Ah, never mind I guess. Thor said awkwardly, we can deal with that after saving the world from destruction. Sound good, he asked rhetorically. Great, now if we can. The Avenger cut his sentence off abruptly as the phone in his pocket began to ring out. Huh. That was fast. It's Dr. Xavier. One second. He said, raising a finger and putting the phone to his ear. There is no way he has rallied his people yet, is there? Tsunade asked. It's doubtful. Midgard has always been a bit too individualistic for easy cooperation, Odin replied. Everyone perked up. It seemed the man had more pull than they believed if he was able to round everyone up that quickly. Tony nodded a few times, throwing in a few, yes, sure, and, uh huh, every now and then until he pulled the phone away from himself and tried handing it to the blonde. Naruto frowned. What? It's for you. A young lady named Anna Marie from the Xavier Institute wants to talk to you. Popular weren't you? Tony asked with a smirk, seeing the goddess of death beginning to look upset. Only he would find it appropriate to make that comment knowing a man's wife was getting upset. Hela narrowed her eyes and the room fell silent at the actions of the young mutant woman. Clearly the poor girl had no idea her actions were earning the ire of Hela herself. Hela turned to Naruto and shot him a sharp look and placed a hand on her hip. She remembered perfectly who Anna Marie was and narrowed her eyes. The way the child caressed her husband's hand when they shook hands rubbed her the wrong way. She had been seconds away from removing her head cleanly off her shoulders. That's a bit of an overreaction, Kashina scolded. Several of the shinobi sent her dry looks in response. Naruto looked at the outstretched hand but made no moves to take the phone. Answer it. Hila ordered. I'm good actually, he told her trying to decline. He wants to live, damn it. Hashirama said with comical tears in his eyes as he recalled how Mito used to react to his plethora of fangirls back in the day. Unfortunately, his wife wasn't trying to hear that and with a soft shove, she moved him closer to the phone. Answer the phone and see what the child wants. The blonde looked around the room hoping one of them would come to his aid only to be disappointed. It seemed everyone had decided the ground or the walls were more interesting at the moment. I really don't think it's necessary, he tried one more time. We have things to take care of. Hila gave him one last look. A look that he hadn't seen since the early days in their relationship when she thought he had been flirting with some girl in their army. That had been a rough day but once he proved it wasn't as she thought, she made it up to him in a very pleasant way later that night. The new queen of Asgard grinned at that memory, she most definitely made it up to him. He sighed and took the phone, placing it up to his ear. Hela was quick to place her head on the other side of the device in an attempt to listen in on the conversation. The other readers looked at her and she simply shrugged. Hello. Hello. Anna replied in a nervous and unsure voice I wanted to talk to you when you were here but you were in a rush. I was wondering when you would be back, Naruto heard whispers in the background, probably the students that were there earlier. When you two would be back she corrected. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, 
We were only there to discuss some important information with Dr. Xavier so I'm not sure when or if we'll be back. If we do return, I'll be sure to let you know. He answered before handing back the phone to Tony. He wrapped his arm around his wife's waist. Her eyes were still narrowed but now her arms were crossed. Oh do calm down Gila. Frigga said with a roll of her eyes. She's unable to touch anyone because of her powers. I'm sure she was just shocked to see that she could actually make contact with someone and got excited. He tried reasoning. He loved his wife, he really did but he would be lying if he didn't think her jealousy went out of control sometimes. She would swear up and down that she wasn't a jealous woman, claiming that no other woman could compare to her in either beauty, power, or skill both in and out of the bedroom. That all went out the window whenever someone decided to get bold and get too close to what she considered, hers. You have nothing to worry about alright? Gila rolled her eyes again but leaned her head into his shoulder. Perhaps she had let herself lose it for a moment. It's all right to stake your claim and mark your territory sweetheart, but that poor girl is probably terribly lonely and you too might be able to help, Kashina said. Let us just continue the story, yes? Gila groused. The blonde sighed in relief. Looking back at the Avengers, he was about to speak but like Tony, he stopped himself before the first word could even make it out of his mouth. He quickly turned so that he was looking out the window into the distance. What's wrong? Peter asked, trying to see if anything would set his spider sense off. A stone is nearby. Naruto replied. It's staying in place, activating and deactivating. Whoever has it is either practicing with it, or they're trying to get attention. Could be a trap but perhaps an opportunity either way, Tobarama said. Tapping the staff on the ground, the dark blue and black portal opened behind him. I'll be back in a moment, if all goes well we'll have another stone, he said. Gila took his arm and followed him into the portal. Once closed, the remaining men glanced at each other. You don't think it's a trap do you? Peter asked. Even if it is, like Lord Second said, it's also an opportunity they can't pass up, Monado pointed out. Tony shook his head. Can't say for sure. If they know someone has two stones they wouldn't want to draw attention to themselves. We'll just have to let him handle it and hope for the best. 4x The married couple appeared a few miles out in the middle of the large city, ignoring the looks from the civilians going about their day. Naruto walked in the direction he felt the stone until suddenly, the feeling stopped. This is it. 177A Bleecker Street, Naruto read. Walking up the steps, he raised a hand to knock on the door. The moment his knuckles made contact with the blue door, the environment changed. The street they were on had been changed into a dark room with multiple glass display cases and a large circular symbol on the side of the building. A bit of light shone through the slightly tinted glass. The readers tensed slightly. They doubted very much that whatever they were facing could stand against both Naruto and Hila as they were but to alter the environment so easily was no simple feat. At least they hoped it wasn't and whoever the couple was facing could simply change reality at will without issue. Well this is new. Gila commented, not at all impressed by the display. Her finger ran across one of the display cases and she wrinkled her nose at the dust that had stuck itself to her. This place is filthy. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a dirty home. That sounds like something an upset mother would say. Naruto snorted. Really? She asked in a sardonic tone. Perhaps after all this is over you can make good on that promise you made to me before we were sealed away. We can see if I really do say that. Yes. Kashina and Minato both cheered, causing Gila to smile at the approval of her in-laws. Some of the others looked a bit uncomfortable with the idea, namely Odin, but by and large the shinobi seemed happy with such a prospect. Naruto and Gila. They heard from above them. Neither bothered to get into any sort of fighting positions even as the singular man floated down until he was standing right in front of them. Odin's two most valuable. Putting his foot in his mouth right off the start. I can already tell this will be a fight. Loki scoffed. They stared at the man before them, each taking in his features and measuring him up. The man seemed to be somewhere in his thirties with a small goatee and wore a blue outfit that seemed almost black in this lighting, along with the red cape, and finally a gold necklace around his neck. Naruto also took note of the cape the man wore and how it seemed to flow even though there's no wind blowing at the moment. Maybe I should get one of those, he whispered to his wife. You will not. Whipped. Kakashi and Sasuke chuckled getting scoffs from several others in the room. Their eyes moved to the necklace and Naruto instantly knew that's where the stone was being kept. You can put the staff down if you like, 
the man said, motioning to the small holder that had suddenly appeared next to him. The blonde shook his head. He'd made sure to grip the staff at the part where the Infinity Stones were being kept and since he wasn't on guard yet, Naruto knew the man couldn't sense them like he could. Does he really think that Naruto would just set what is clearly a weapon down in this unfamiliar environment? Hashirama asked. He seems, I dunno, kind of arrogant. Kashina pointed out. That he does. Tobarama agreed as he continued to read. I'll pass. You have us at a disadvantage mister, Naruto trailed off. My name is Dr. Stephen Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, he introduced himself. Naruto nodded politely, his head turning slowly as Strange walked by them to lean against one of the walls. A pleasure. Can I presume you called us here on purpose? Naruto asked. Dr. Strange confirmed his suspicion with a slight incline of his head. That's correct. Suddenly, the room changed once more and they were now seated on some admittedly comfortable love seats. Naruto and Hila sat next to each other while the sorcerer sat across from them with a pensive look on his face. I was somewhat looking forward to a battle, truth be told, Thor complained. Don't rule that out yet brother. Loki replied. As comfortable as we are, Naruto began. Would you like to enlighten us as to why we're here? Doctor Strange leaned forward in his seat. One of my responsibilities as Sorcerer Supreme is to keep track of beings that could potentially be a threat to the Earth. His eyes slowly drifted to the sole woman in the room. I had this same conversation with your brother Thor not too long ago, although in his case it was for bringing Loki. Hela laughed. I can see why you would want to keep track of him. The God of Mischief rolled his eyes. The reason you two are here is because like Loki, you're some of those beings, he revealed. Naruto raised an eyebrow. He hadn't seen that coming. So you want to know why we're here? To my knowledge the two of you were a well-guarded Asgardian secret. Sealed away for whatever reason Odin saw fit. He concluded. So why are you on Earth? A bit outdated but I find it strange he knows about that at all. Especially with Odin covering the whole thing up. Hela said shooting a glare at her sighing father. Hela smirked. Well it didn't work out for the old man did it? A pity he was dead by the time we returned. Naruto ignored his wife for the moment and leaned back. I'm glad you asked. Tell me, on that list of yours, is there a person named Thanos? The name isn't familiar to me. The man responded evenly. Blindsided. Good thing Naruto and Hila are there then, Hashirama commented. Figures, he thought. Naruto was glad the man allowed him to speak without interrupting as he gave him the same information he gave Xavier. The man listened to every word and looked more serious the longer the blonde spoke. It was clear to see that Thanos was the true threat to the world at the moment. So he plans to wipe half of the universe. Doctor Strange said with a tone of disbelief. He'd heard some things in his time but this was a whole new level of crazy. I really am happy everyone is taking the threat seriously. It took far too long for people to regard the Akatsuki as more than mercenaries for our world. So much trouble could have been avoided. Tsunade said. That's right. So we're going to put a stop to it. To do that, Naruto pointed the end of the staff at the man's necklace. We need the stone you're wearing around your neck. Now the conflict starts. Loki said. Eggs are I mean oh no, how foolish of them to fight one another. Thor said awkwardly. Strange smiled but it held no warmth. I'm afraid that won't be happening. If Thanos really is coming, the stone will need to be protected and I can't just hand it over to an Asgardian I've never met. For the first time since arriving, Naruto moved his hand lower on the staff to show the two stones glowing brightly. Well I'm not really Asgardian for one. Second, as you can see, I already have two of the stones in my possession. The Avengers are already working with this as is Charles Xavier. So again, I'll ask politely. Please hand over the stone. His voice, while still calm, held some force behind it. A yellow portal passed through the room and like before, they were in a completely new area. Here again? Hila asked, seeing the large green field they now stood in. This is where Odin died. Odd choice to place them there, Kashina murmured. If you want the stone you're going to have to take it by force. I'm not handing it over. Naruto sighed, he really hoped the man could have just listened to him talk and see things his way like when he was younger. Times really had changed. Looking over at his wife, he spoke the same words she told him when they'd been recently freed. Don't interfere. Hela rolled her eyes. Doctor Strange began to float in the air, 
and golden rings spinning clockwise began to appear along his sleeves. Doing as she was told, Hela created plenty of space between herself and the two men. Strange was high above them looking down with the most utter seriousness on his face. On the other hand Naruto looked as calm as could be, not at all worried about the man he was facing. Golden spectral whips formed in the sorcerer's hands and swiftly made their way towards the blonde in zigzag patterns. As they approached, Naruto whistled as he was able to feel how much energy was coursing through them. Tilting his head to the right, the first whip passed by him harmlessly while the second one was aimed at his chest. Using the staff he easily deflected the trajectory of the attack allowing it to crash into the ground. This doctor is really out of his depth. Tobarama scoffed at the man's actions. Glancing up once again, he frowned at the lack of an opponent and began surveying the area. He couldn't have just disappeared. A gold eyebrow was raised at the sight of the sky beginning to break apart in the shape of triangles, light bounced off of them as if it were glass. That's new. He commented. The large sheet of glass began to descend on him but he made no effort to move, though he was prepared to use one of the stones if necessary. The glass passed over him harmlessly but suddenly, he found himself upside down, falling, towards the sky. We're in the mirror dimension now. He heard from all around him. Here, I'm in control. Are you sure about that? Hashirama chuckled. Naruto finally found Doctor Strange, he was hovering in front of him moving his hands in an intricate way with his magic. Magical circles began to appear all around him, each with illegible text scribed on them. The blonde's eyes widened when each portal created ten of those whips and latched onto him, slowly applying more and more pressure onto him. Doctor Strange watched as the whips quickly enveloped every inch of him until a golden mummy-like object flowed in the sky. The man frowned, at the simplicity of the battle, something wasn't right. His assumption was correct. When the whips began covering his face, Strange never noticed the smirk that had donned the blonde's face. I'm getting claustrophobic just thinking about being caught in that. Strange heard from beside him. Yeah, that's a classic move from him. Sasuke almost smiled. Turning slowly, the man came face to face with the same blonde who should have been up above getting squeezed until he was out cold. What? Making a single hand sign, the Naruto trapped inside the makeshift cocoon exploded. The staff was then pointed at the man who was quick to conjure a large circular shield in front of him to protect him from the red blast that was aimed at him. It was a relatively low level blast, meant only to test the defensive capabilities of his magic. Strange has good reflexes. He blocked the attack when I was only a foot away and was already conjuring up another attack with his free hand. Naruto thought, mildly impressed. He was no Sasuke in terms of speed but still rather impressive. Sasuke seemed to preen at his old friend's praise much to the amusement of his teammates. He is right that the wizard is impressive, though he still doesn't seem like much of a match, Thor commented. The world shifted once more and again, the blonde allowed himself to fall if only to see what the sorcerer would do next. He was definitely interested in this magic he wielded, and wanted to see much more. Giant spectral arms appeared out of thin air, all reaching for and trying to punch at the blonde. Unlike before, he didn't have a clone on standby to switch places with so he would need to actively maneuver to avoid being grabbed. As long as we're in this dimension, Strange can do damn near anything he wants. I'll need to get out before I can start fighting back, he thought. In the distance he could see the border of the mirror dimension slowly turning in place. There is the battle Savan I recall, Tobarama remarked. Locking onto Strange, he disappeared and reappeared in front of the now shocked sorcerer. Another shield was conjured to stop the punch that had been sent his way. Naruto's fist collided with the barrier, created several cracks in it. He aimed the staff at the barrier and the reality stone began to glow brightly. Sorcerer or not, you're still human. Once the shield breaks you'll move aside. Naruto thought. The cracks became more profound until finally, as he predicted, the shield could bear no more. Millions of smaller cracks appeared on the shield until it finally burst under the immense pressure. As predicted, Strange moved his body aside to not get hit by the concentrated power of the stone. Naruto smiled, everything went just as planned. The attack wasn't cancelled and it soon found the border of the dimension, easily destroying it in the process. A strategy behind a use of overwhelming power. It's like dealing with you or Madara again. Tobarama said to his elder brother. Hashirama smirked at such words. The world was right side up once again. Doctor Strange was down on a knee panting slightly but righted himself a moment later. 
Naruto was impressed. Taking the full brunt of an infinity stone and managing to hold it back even for a split second was something to be praised, but it definitely took a lot out of the man. That mirror dimension and the attack from the stone took a lot out of you. Naruto commented. You sure you don't want to just reconsider? The answer was strange getting himself into a fighting position once again. Sighing again, Naruto realized the only way he would listen would be if he had no choice. Just like Madara had only listened to Hashirama after he'd been screwed over by Zetsu and Kaguya, it seemed Dr. Strange would need to be out of commission. Hashirama's smile became wistful as he thought of his oldest friend and the myriad of what-ifs in his mind. Bending his knees, he jumped high into the sky until he was a mere dot and then disappeared. Strange looked over at Hila who was filing her nails. She felt his gaze and shrugged uncaringly. Don't look at me. I'm not sure what he's doing either. As if I would tell you if I did know. Hila scoffed toward the image of the man. The cloudy sky began to darken even though it was supposed to be light out. The clouds turned a deep dark gray and lightning flashed through the empty skies. Wind picked up rapidly and then a loud piercing roar echoed across the land. The clouds began to move into a swirl-like pattern gaining speed as they did so. A single drop of rain fell, then another and another, until a light drizzle fell upon the battlefield. Strange kept his gaze up at the sky, he knew Naruto was up there somewhere. Another roar echoed, this one louder than before. The force of the roar was so great, the clouds cleared, revealing a large lightning dragon that was circling the skies. Strange didn't fear it, he'd seen worse with Dormammu, but he couldn't simply write it off either. The beast easily covered the battlefield and then some. Oh you absolute son of a bitch! Sasuke bit out. Hey! Kashina shouted. That's my technique. Sasuke ignored her. Tobarama let out an uncharacteristic giggle as Anuchiha had their technique copied. Naruto might be his favorite Hokage beside himself at this point, even if the man no longer used the title. His eye spotted Naruto, carelessly riding along the body of the dragon, staring right back at him. The dragon followed his line of sight until it too was staring at him and began to descend with its mouth wide open. Strange's hands moved rapidly, focusing on creating the strongest shield he could muster. His plan was derailed however, as the dragon exploded into a shower of miniature dragons, each coming down faster than he could react. He didn't just copy your technique, he made it so much better, Sakura mumbled to Sasuke. Just like the Rasengan. Kakashi said as he watched Naruto's perfected version of another's jutsu. A smaller shield enveloped him, managing to stop the lightning strikes that were hitting. With the disbursement of the dragon, Naruto could no longer be seen, the flashes of light didn't help much either. Using a simple spell to locate someone, he saw the blonde with his hands in his pockets, falling alongside one of the dragons. Naruto raised the staff high into the air and enacted the second part of the plan. The dragons and lightning were to keep him busy, to hide the main attack. A red veil flashed across the area and Strange felt his stomach drop and dread filled his body. Behind the blonde was a giant meteor, perhaps just a bit smaller than the moon making its way towards them. He's going to kill everyone. Strange muttered, trying desperately to think of a spell that could stop this. No Naruto spoke from beside him. Heal and I will easily survive and I'm sure the stone will too. I'll retrieve it afterwards he said smoothly. Well that is effective. Loki shrugged. Seems a bit out of character for the boy I met. Hashirama frowned. Hardly. My Naruto wiped armies out and devastated entire realms in the old wars, Hila said with immense pride. I sealed them both for a reason. Odin pointed out getting a venomous glare from his daughter in return. Strange's shoulders dropped as the realization that death was imminent. Naruto looked at him then Hila, and finally at the meteor. Just as it would have collided with the earth, it disappeared as if it were never present. What? Strange muttered. Naruto walked around him until he was kneeling in front of him and rested the staff against his shoulders. I didn't come here to kill you, Strange. I've never been one to kill people just because. I just needed you to see that fighting me would be pointless. If I really wanted the stone I could have had it within the second the fighting started. All this, to prove a point. Strange muttered in disbelief. Yeah that sounds about right. Many of the readers said. Naruto laughed. Yup. So, care to hand the time stone over? Strange stared at him and crossed his arms in a strange way in front of his chest. The golden amulet hanging from his neck shifted until the green light from the time stone made itself seen. 
The Sorcerer Supreme sat down with his legs crossed and brought his hands up. What is he doing? Hila asked, now standing beside him. Strange was floating a few feet off the ground, his body moving in erratic patterns with blurs coming off of him every so often. I'm not sure. The readers all leaned forward in confusion at the man's actions. The man stayed in that position for five minutes until he fell down, taking deep breaths with wide eyes. You all right? Naruto asked. Strange coughed but nodded nonetheless. What was that? I was looking into the future. Seeing how safe the stone would be with me and my people. The readers all looked at one another. That could be, helpful. Minato muttered a bit disbelieving. Then again the man did possess the time stone. And? Hila asked curious about this ability to see into the future. Thanos takes it from me every time if I keep it, he replied grimly. I have to know, what do you plan to do with the stones? Keep them out of Thanos's hands. He plans to erase half of every living thing in the universe. I plan to help those struggling. I'll make sure there's just enough so people everywhere have access to what's necessary for life. Evolution of their species will be up to them after that. You can think of me as something of an overseer. That seems awfully like what I envision, Sasuke grumbled. Yeah just barring the mass execution of those that disagree with his point of view. Kakashi replied. Doctor Strange stared at the blonde in front of him and grabbed the amulet. Pulling it off of his neck, he begrudgingly handed it over. Naruto took it from the man, and put it around his neck. Grabbing the amulet itself, he forced it to activate and smiled when the mechanism opened. He wouldn't take it out just yet, he still needed the new staff. Standing up, he nodded to his wife. We got what we needed, now we just need vision and we'll have four. This has all gone incredibly well, all things considered. Tobarama muttered. Turning to Strange, he continued. There's no doubt Thanos will be here soon. You know what's coming, if you want to help, gather everyone you can and prepare for an invasion soon. Despite having lost, Strange nodded. He was mature enough to realize this was bigger than himself and the stone now. While he may not like having to hand over the time stone, he would cooperate for the cause. Let's go. The married couple stepped through the portal and disappeared from the area, leaving Doctor Strange to mull over the events of the day and those to come. It may have taken a bit but he did come around, Kashina said. Only after being threatened with annihilation, shown that his annihilation was easy and inevitable, and looked to the future to see his resistance was worthless, Hila pointed out. Semantics. The redhead snorted. 4x the three Avengers turned to see the portal opening once more and wondered how things had gone. It hadn't been too long since they left and they could use some good news. Everyone noticed the new addition to Naruto's outfit in the form of the amulet around his neck. Just keeps getting more accessories. Maybe they can put the next stone in a hat. Kakashi joked. It went well then. Peter asked. Naruto nodded. The time stone is ours and we have the help of the Sorcerer Supreme. Great. So what now? Bruce asked. The blonde shrugged. We wait until we can talk to Vision. Not sure how long that'll take but I think we should call it a day. Naruto said, looking out to the darkening skies. Is there somewhere on Asgard for us to rest? Sir Tor caused a lot of damage. Rest? That does sound nice. Hila said. Hila was going to tell him that he was the one that used their buildings as nails but decided against it. I'm sure there is. The two disappeared without another word, leaving the Avengers to their own devices. See. I told you they weren't that bad. Peter said in a proud tone. He is just my favorite of the Midgardians already. Hela chuckled alongside Kashina. Asgard the Queen is back. Hela announced cheerfully upon seeing her siblings. Thor rolled his eyes and Loki sighed. I can see that. What's that? Thor asked, pointing to the amulet. Naruto let it glow momentarily. This is the time stone. Naruto informed them. We're up to three now. Excellent. Now there are a few things we need to discuss. Thor began only to be cut off by Hela's raised hand. Whatever it is, it can wait until tomorrow. Naruto and I will be heading to our quarters to rest. She informed them. Both men made a face at her comment causing her to roll her eyes again. Oh I'm sure. Loki snorted. Hela rolled her eyes even as Odin frowned and Thor looked repulsed. Grow up, I didn't mean, never mind. Come now Naruto. Naruto tapped both men on the shoulders and followed his wife as she led them away. As they walked, Hila stopped to think about what her brothers had thought. 
They'd done it once but they were in a rush to get things done. Now they had a bit more time on their hands. Glancing over her shoulder, she grinned seeing her husband's eyes on her rear. On second thought, maybe rest can wait until later. Hila spoke in a suggestive tone. Atta girl. Get your man. Kashina said happily. Minato seemed a bit more uncomfortable but he had to say, he was pretty enthused by the fact that his son had bagged a queen goddess. What father got to say their daughter-in-law was the goddess of death. The blonde matched her grin, realizing what she was getting at. He was never one to turn down such an invitation. I actually have an idea, he said, taking her hand and activating the reality stone. Just like when they acquired it, the two found themselves in the same place he'd taken them to. Hand in hand, they walked down the straight path towards the largest building. Konoha. Sakura muttered. What are we doing back at your home? Hila asked. Now that she had a bit more time she took in her surroundings to try to really take in where her beloved grew up. It seemed like a rather poor village compared to the gold-lined Asgard but there was something homey about it. I want to fulfill a dream I had when I was younger, he replied cryptically. Hila raised an eyebrow. Didn't you become the leader of this place? Wasn't that your dream? Kashina and Minato smiled in pride over their son and all that he had accomplished. He nodded. Yeah that was the main dream. This one was more of a checklist type dream. The woman didn't understand what was going on. She thought she had made her intentions to make love clear but he brought her here instead. Maybe she should have been more direct, she thought. They made their way up the large stair set, completely invisible to the people walking by. She supposed with the power of the reality stone it wouldn't be hard to do. Naruto opened the door to the office and stepped inside with a nostalgic look on his face. I never thought I would be back here. Anyway, he said. Hila didn't get a chance to ask what, he grabbed her by the waist and with little effort placed her atop the desk right in front of the Hokage chair. It finally dawned on the woman what they were doing here. Oh. Well that is more like it. Hila practically purred. Minato, we aren't going to watch them, Kashina worriedly commented. You brought me here, to have censored in your old office, she asked. Naruto nodded. One of my private dreams was to bring my wife here and have censored with her after achieving my goal. Unfortunately I didn't get that chance then, but I do now. Hila laughed. Well then, you have your wife here. What will you do now? Calling upon the power of the reality stone once more, the two were left as naked as the day they were born. His eyes were drawn to her bare censors and despite having seen them for centuries they still excited him like the first time. I don't want to see this. Half of the room muttered. Speak for yourselves. Tobarama said as he eyed the Queen of Asgard alongside Kakashi and surprisingly Sasuke and Sakura. I hope Naruto joins us soon. I can't wait to tell him all about this little moment. Hila said only to frown when that didn't deter the leering readers at all. She had told him once that if her censors really excited him that much then he must have been an infant, to which he responded by saying she could call him an infant. His wife pulled him into her arms and brought her lips up to his, slowly letting their lips smack together. They'd been apart for so long that the simple feeling of desire she felt coming from her husband sent a chill down her spine. Likewise, Naruto loved the feeling of the goddess's soft lips on his, the subtle taste she left drove him crazy. The intensity of their kiss reminded him of their wedding night. He had gotten no sleep. I would bet not. Frigga giggled. Their lips separated momentarily to catch their breaths but the small pecks continued. Letting his hands dip down to the small of her back, he pulled her closer so that she was just barely sitting on the edge of the table. He was able to see her rose beginning to drip and knew she wouldn't be wanting any foreplay. He was okay with that, he wanted her as much as she wanted him. They could have all the foreplay they wanted in the future. Rubbing two fingers along her slit, he looked her in the eyes and smirked at the lustful look she was sending him. Her hands were gripping his shoulders and he felt her nails begin to dig into him, a warning that she was getting frustrated. Chuckling to himself, he used her nectar as lube for the moment and with practiced ease pushed himself into his wife. If there was something he was thankful for about being sealed, it was for this moment right here. Hila was tighter now than she was on their wedding night. Hila smiled at the moment between herself and her husband. It wasn't hard to ignore the others in the room as she focused on her union with her lover. Her womanhood began to stretch to accommodate him causing the woman to moan softly into his ear. Pulling slightly out of her, he enjoyed the wet sound that was created by the action and pushed back in with force. Hela's long legs quickly wrapped around his waist, preventing him from pulling out as much as he'd like. 
Long strokes were replaced with short but powerful ones. Her nails moved from his shoulders to his back and the raking motion she made caused him to win slightly but he didn't slow down. Hella's legs began to tighten up around his body at the same time, the tell-tale sign that her orgasm was approaching. They had only been doing it for about half an hour but with how long it had been, it was to be expected. The grip he felt on his tool was almost painful but he was committed to making sure she saw stars. Speed up, I don't want to hear this, Odin demanded. You lucky bitch. Sakura hissed toward Hela in a way the goddess took as a compliment more than anything. He laid the woman back and had her grip the sides of the desk, so that he could continue with a bit more leverage. The fire within her burned hotter with every stroke and never being one to hide her pleasure, Hela moaned loudly at the feeling of her orgasm finally hitting. Her body convulsed but once again, Naruto didn't cease. Keeping the same pace, he reached down and pinched her clit to add to her sensation. The pleasure continued to build up within her. Her hands, which had been gripping the sides of the table, clenched with enough force to destroy the wood. Her cum drenched the area where she laid much to Naruto's pleasure. Finally slowing down, he leaned forward to kiss the woman again and was glad when she reciprocated his action. Minato wasn't comfortable but he was damn proud of his boy. Kashina was simply mortified. You might want to take a deep breath, he warned. Hila looked at him with a half out of it look and wondered what he was talking about. Gripping her by the waist, his intensity sped up. Every thrust from then on went deeper than she could remember. Hila could feel a dull soreness in between her legs and as a warrior who would need to battle in the not-so-distant future, that could potentially slow her down. As a woman and wife however, she wanted nothing more than for her husband to continue what he was doing and make her feel like this forever. Like the goddess she was, Hila endured the pleasurable pounding for another hour, experiencing three more mind-blowing orgasms. The throbbing she felt from her husband's censored inside of her warned her that he was on the verge as well. Wanting to make sure he was as satisfied as she was, Hila sat up and hugged him warmly while he did his thing. Whispering a mix of loving and dirty words in his ear still got him going like it used to and finally, he let himself go. If anyone from the old days of Asgard were to see her now, they wouldn't be able to comprehend the kind of face she was making. Naruto's love filled her well and the feeling of rope after rope of his cum was the last thing she needed to trigger another orgasm. You two definitely make a perfect couple, Loki said a bit sickly. Why are you so squeamish, didn't father turn you into a mare and let you get impregnated by a horse once? Thor asked. Were it not for the host, Thor might have actually felt the true fury of his brother in that moment. The others simply tried D to put the mental image out of their heads for that one. Except Odin who smirked at the thought of his creative punishments for his children. Naruto's arms moved to her back and gently laid her down so that she could enjoy the feeling as much as possible. Looking down at their connected bodies, the gold glint of the amulet around his neck caught his attention. Looking at it and then his wife, a smile not seen since his prankster days as a child crept up on his face. Extending his hand, green runes like the ones Doctor Strange used appeared across the length of his arms. What are you doing darling? Hila asked, slightly out of breath. Naruto didn't answer. His hand came down rubbing just above her womanhood and turned to the left. A green glow surrounded Hila and soon her back arched again as her orgasm was rewinded and let to play again. She was already satisfied but he would make sure she couldn't think straight. Oh that isn't fair. Hila frowned. It looks amazing though, Sakura commented. She had gotten him out of his prison and for that, she deserved to feel something no other woman would ever get to experience. A small green rune appeared on her stomach and automatically rewinded time around her after she came, letting her experience it again and again. Naruto, I'm censored, she cried in pleasure. This is. The feeling of her clamping up on him over and over again was indescribable but he was sure it was nothing compared to what she was experiencing. Smiling at his actions, he looked up and noticed the portraits of the previous Hokage staring back at him, it was a little off-putting. You're either really proud of me dad, or you're turning in your grave for what I've just done. Naruto thought with amusement. Eventually, he cut power to the stone and let Hila rest. Sweat covered both of them but she looked worse for wear. The mascara on her face ran down her face and her hair clung to her wet skin. It's both son. It's both. Minato commented. It's not like we all haven't done the same thing in the office or at least somewhat the same thing. Hashirama shrugged as he recalled bending Mito over the desk a few times. True. Tobarama said as he also recalled bending Mito over the desk a few times. 
after his brother had passed on of course, to do otherwise would be disrespectful. Some more than others, Sakura said as she recalled finding Shizune under Tsunade's desk a few times. True. Kakashi agreed, recalling having Shizune under his desk a few times himself. The shaking of her body was much more pronounced but the smile on her face remained. That, that was, she couldn't finish her sentence. I know, Naruto teased. He picked her up in a bridal carry and adjusted his head so that she could wrap her arms around him. Her hold was tight and he had a feeling she wouldn't be letting go of him tonight. Using the reality stone, he took them back where they originally were, and then the space stone to teleport them to their chambers. As he was placing her on their luxurious looking bed, a chuckle from her caught his attention. What is it? He asked curiously. I know this isn't what my father imagined you would be using the most powerful objects in the universe for when he told you. No, it isn't. Odin frowned. Naruto smiled. That was true but then again, he didn't imagine Odin would seal them up either. In his mind he couldn't complain even if he were still alive. The man sealed them away, so he used the stones to turn his daughter into a quivering mess. That wasn't bad if you asked him. Let's just get some rest dear. Naruto whispered to her, planting a kiss on her forehead. It might be one of the last peaceful sleep we get until after everything is over. Hila nodded and turned around to hold him before letting sleep claim her. Following suit, Naruto threw their blankets over them and joined her. Thankfully that's over. Though I'm happy you two can please each other so, thoroughly. Kashina awkwardly said to her daughter-in-law. 4x well, what did they say? Thor asked impatiently. Loki shook his head. I told you we should have waited before trying to talk to them, he said bitterly. Why? Was Hela in a bad mood? I wish, he replied dryly. It seems our dear sister and brother-in-law decided to have a little fun in the hall. Now I have the image of his backside and our sister's dopey look burned into my mind. He replied with disgust as he made his way out of the large room. I wish that was all. Loki muttered. Thor grimaced. Well, better him than me I suppose. We can always use the time stone tomorrow. That's the chapter. Who is next? Tobarama asked. Thanks.